Uh, chapter 34, I believe, uh, <clears throat> which is awesome. Um, sorry, I'm out of breath. I had to take care of something upstairs and just barely made it back in time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> to jump back into it, the party uh, had recently caused uh, quite a ruckus in a few different places. Uh, in the city of Elduin and other places in Karandia. Um, one of those included killing the archpriest of Karandia, a man named Ran Mon. <clears throat> and they had, in the process of that, uncovered, uncovered an evil plot to kill a whole bunch of people and basically in league with the necromancer that the party has been chasing, turn them undead. Well, the slaying of an archpriest uh, it turns out to be a little controversial, and some people believe the party should be on trial. Um, you know, there's, there's basically some controversy over the decision. On top of that, the party went and killed a very powerful criminal uh, warlord or uh, criminal, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Crime boss uh, of a very powerful organization called the Leather Hand, uh, sending the underworld into... Uh, a bit of chaos itself as well. And so all things considered, their friend Lord Greenwood um, recommends that they skip town for a while uh, while they try to decide what needs to happen and uh, hopefully persuade the right people to uh, let the party uh, be heroes rather than you know criminals, but we'll see. So the party um, takes a job from Lady Inthris, the governess of the province of Valgard, who allegedly gives them a bounty uh, to deal with some goblins that had been harassing um, the areas around the town of Lessa. Um, supposedly a bounty from the Duke, uh, the Duke of the area called Duke Einho. And after giving the, the bounty in front of some people, um, she whispers in Valen's ear that that's basically just a front and that the true mission is to find a necromantic cult that had grown up in Lessa and, but she didn't want anybody to know that the party was coming. It was basically a secret mission uh, that she wanted them to keep under wraps. So <clears throat> the party departed making a brief stop to save Valen's life and deliver him from a, 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 a disease, um, encountering some attacks and some, uh, you know, issues along the way, getting attacked by undead who seemed to be seeking them out specifically. Um, <clears throat> but finally arriving in the town of Lessa, a, a town that centers around mining uh, of several different resources, as well as um, harvesting some wood nearby, uh, elven cedars. They meet with the halfling Barbic, who had been tasked uh, to find out what he could, but was unfortunately not able to find out a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> they uh, uh, have some conversation with him and, and gather what information he can give to them about the town and set about trying to see what they can discover and trying to investigate to see if they can get any leads or find out anything about the presence of this cult. They have a very friendly conversation with a, uh, a homeless man in a poor area called The Sheds, um, who, is, who is very informative <laughs> about a lot of things. Um, not a whole lot about relevant things, but about a lot of things. <laughs> they uh, saw, they, they basically investigated the, the site of uh, the disappearance of his friend uh, in uh, recent days. They also um, spoke with a former, a former criminal um, who informed them that uh, there was, the, the, the criminal element, the organized criminal element of Lessa had been essentially chased out of town or, or moved on due to the presence of some uh, cult activities and, and things of that nature. And, and basically told the, the, 
the party if you want to find out, you know, he, what he says, any organized, like nefarious element only grows into power by making arrangements with the people in power. And so if you want to find out more, then you need to start looking at the people who are in positions of power or reputation or, uh, you know, influence within the town. And so, uh, I should, have, I should have said before that they also visited the town leader, a uh, man named Hadem. Um, had a brief encounter when uh, Easy tried to cast a spell but was caught midway by one of the guards. Um, the mercenary guards, named, uh, known as the Steel Snakes. And uh, yeah, so now they have, uh, with minimal success, been investigating and looking around town at these different places and uh, had just departed their, their meeting with this uh, former criminal, Voltan, and are now in the streets of uh, Lessa again, trying to decide their next move. And so as <clears throat> the day, you know, you're sort of in um, midday, uh, getting later by this point, um, you know, getting probably late afternoon, around four o'clock or so, as you step back out into the still busy streets of Lessa with the, as there's the, the general uh, sound of lots of voices and horses and uh, the sound of carts creaking by loaded with goods and some of them empty um, and just the general den of very busy streets. <clears throat> where we'll pick things up. So Follies, what would you like to do? I believe we had, had some things we needed to buy. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, we need to I need to find a crystal ball, actually, if if we wanted to take a peek on a few people. Is that I wanted to get a, a new tent and bedroll for Valin because uh I might have set it on fire. It's fine. Uh, it's, this is it's fine. Okay. It happens. It's one I mean, of those things. Does it though? With this group, <laughs> yes. Oh, that, oh, yeah. No, it tracks. It yeah, tracks. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I can go shopping. I don't necessarily need to buy anything, but sounds good to me. Well, if we want to save time, we could split up, and Bear, you could roll with me if Sora and Valen want to go find their tent. Yep. I'm also going with you, Shuck. I need a uh, cup of peace. Where do you go to find a crystal ball? I assume they have the, the cup of as well. I honestly don't know in this town. I was was hoping to ask a few people. Yeah. I know um, one of the stores he was telling us about, I think, had magical items of sorts. The Empire, the right? Something Empire? I believe so. Hmm. Map. Find that map. We, we map. we do have a map. <laughs> a map. Can we map, use a map. Map. Yeah, map. we're gonna have angel. We're gonna have um, angels apothecary. We're gonna have the shining empire trading company. Shining empire. Uh, we're gonna have farmers market. We're gonna have the general store, uh, and then we're gonna have a blacksmith and a woodcarver. Hmm. We're at Voltan. We're at Voltan's warehouse at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, would you like to try the Shining Empire Trading Company? They might Not good to me. The apothecary might have a better chance of having the crystal ball, right? Uh, maybe. I thought apothecary they were... will be potions and Herbs. herbals and things like that. Hmm. Hmm. Valen and I can go to the general <laughs> yes. store to pick up any general goods and then I wanted to go to the uh, is the blacksmith and the woodcarver one building like it is in Elduin? Uh, no. Okay. No, they're separate. Gotcha. Then I do want to go to the blacksmith. I'll go to the general store and the blacksmith. Okay. I think the trading post might have a collection of random goods. That's um, true. Or... Yeah. And boys, if you happen to find any potions or acids of interesting note, 
Mm. You just let the girl know, okay? Definitely. All right, <laughs> gentlemen, let's be off. What's up? We'll meet back um, at, at the, hotel. the entrance. We can yep. meet back at when we're going to meet our gentleman friend. Um, ah, yeah. Had them. People's Hall. Mm-hmm. People's Hall. We're all basically walking the same way anyway. It's all kind of been the. <laughs> it's when you say, it's like, see you later, and then you still oh, walk wait, the wait, same oh, direction. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, this is just awkward now. Yeah. <laughs> I've already said goodbye once, not doing it again. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to turn and walk the opposite direction, knowing it's the opposite direction. <laughs> Wait, where do you see the general store? What store is that? So the the we talked about that the the general store the the like some of those basic shops are there, but they're not on the map. Right. So how do you know where it is? Um, he told you about them. Barbic told you. Like, oh, I was asking Larry. How does Larry know where, where that is? Yeah, I think all the shopping's kind of in one general area. Unless yeah, something's most different. of those are going to be over on uh, like the buildings close to the farmers market. Gotcha. Uh, you get the impression the farmers market is kind of the general area of commerce, like the where most of the shops are set up, uh, for the most part, with some exceptions. Okay. Well. Okay, so no. Asura is in. Who is going to the general store? And uh, so Asura and Valen. Valen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Are going to is there anything that the boys is there anything that you need from the general store this would just be general goods no really no okay. thank you mm-hmm. okay um so for the general store and the blacksmith we're just gonna just to kind of save some time um what are, what are you looking for from the general store um, I wanted to get a new tent and bedroll, but I wanted to get a tent that was like a nicer tent that had like more water resistance and basically a little bit better than the one that we had to start with. Okay. Make sure make sure it's flame resistant too. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me uh, to a, a magical tent. <laughs> okay, so bedroll is no problem. That's one gold. Um, it's an expensive bedroll. This general store has, it does have one two person tent uh, for two gold. Um, they recommend if you want a little bit higher end stuff, you might try the Shining Empire uh, as they cater to a little bit higher dollar audience. Uh, and so that's, you can try that or you can just roll with a two person tent, like kind of a normal tent. Well, then what do you want? I mean, I'm perfectly okay with with this. Don't okay. need, I don't need anything really fancy. And three gold it is for a new bedroll in the tent. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Um, for general store, would general store have... Um, uh english i have it and i can use it it's a language that i speak mm-hmm. um my brain just left all words that have anything to do with what i'm ask, about to ask for um <laughs> general store would also have like uh crossbow bolts and like basic supplies like that like basic uh not at the general store the weaponry you're gonna have to go again to the shining empire or to uh blacksmith maybe um let's see a crossbow bolt uh would probably be the woodworker but it's fine we can say you went there if you want to go if you want to go find crossbow i just need i just need more crossbow bolts okay yeah same okay crossbow bolts for a uh a thing of 20 is one gold um can i get 40 yeah, two gold. I will do this, the 20. Okay, so that's one gold. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I wanted to spend a little bit of time with the blacksmith to just kind of learn more about metal types, metals in this region specifically. Um, and I wanted to kind of collaborate a little <laughs> bit on uh, st- lighter but more powerful metals that I could use for weaponry that has like a greater potential of 
sharp damage. <laughs> piercing? <laughs> Thank you, piercing. Thank you, that was the word I was looking for. Just slashing as well. Yeah, yeah. Roll, roll two things. Roll a persuasion check on the blacksmith. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. That's a 17. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're able to convince him to talk to you about it um, a little bit, at least a little bit, because he is a busy man. Um, Understandable. So uh, roll an investigation check. Uh, okay. <laughs> Five. <laughs> okay. Um, Blacksmith has a large vocabulary that you cannot compile. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he uses big fancy words. Yeah. So he conveys, he sort of reiterates that so that the town does deal with a lot of metal, but it's only a couple of kinds for the most part. Um, Lessa has a very large iron mine nearby, um, the largest in Karandia, uh, and the largest, honestly, even a little bit beyond Karandia. Um, and so there's a lot of iron ore that passes through the town. Um, there is a gold mine further out uh, that, that also gets, you know, some attention, but obviously it's it's less and it's a lot smaller operation, more high value, um, and then a small diamond mine. Uh, and but he's he's grew up his whole life in Lessa, so he's not he doesn't really see any exotic stuff come through. Um, you know, he's heard of metals that are stronger, some that are almost unbreakable, some that are, you know, uh, you know, he's heard of wood that's as black as night and, you know, just things like that. He's, that is sort of like rumor and kind of legend among blacksmith kind of stuff. Not really. He's, he just doesn't concern himself too much with that sort of thing. He concerns himself with what makes money here and now. And that's iron. <laughs> well, that was great information. I learned a lot and grew as a person. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Dice failing me already. Okay. So those, is that all you're doing? Uh, that was all I had to do. Valen, is there anything that you needed to do? No, I think the crossbow bolt was the only thing that was really on my uh, to buy list. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So then the rest of you are going where? Trading to the post. Shining Empire. Yeah. Yep. The trading company. Yep. Shining Empire Trading Company. Okay. So you make your way over uh, past a, a busy marketplace area that's sort of um, less a, a central uh, square uh, like you see in Elduin and more of like a row that just goes uh, mm. up the up the town and you know with a bunch of booths and the you know and, and uh, carts and things that have been set up in the middle as well as you know some buildings on one side and then um, a small waterway uh, where there's like a small river that passes through the town and you cross over that and there on the corner you see a very large um, well-built uh, building with a sign uh, that that says Shining Empire Trading Company in very fancy gilded lettering uh, like with uh, some sort of shiny uh, like very well shined metal inlaid into the wood. Um, and so you enter um, and you enter into a what seems to be a smaller room than you expected for the size of the building. Um, and you quickly get the impression that this is probably a very small showroom <laughs> with some personal service. And, you know, most of the other, the things that they sell are kind of kept in the back and retrieved um, as necessary. Um, and you do see uh, two individuals inside. You see one um, armored like plate armored guard with a with a symbol on the of the shining empire on its on his chest 
uh, very well-made armor, uh, and he's standing um, not at attention, but he's standing very alert and and straight, like he's you know somebody who's who knows his business. Um, uh, and he's he's kind of standing off to the side, and then uh, inside you see uh, uh, also a, a kind of shorter, maybe five five two woman. Uh, seemingly human woman with uh, kind of long hair like pulled straight back into a very tight bun and uh, with a kind of spectacle sitting on her nose um, maybe in her, maybe around 30 years old it looks like um, you know not too old but um, you know she has uh, she has some stuff she's writing in, in a box that she's sort of sifting through for a second and then writing uh, writing something again and then uh, she looks up and uh, sees you entering and, and says uh, hello welcome to the shining empire trading company how might I assist you today well hello my name is bear these are the follies I just gesture to uh, Stoic and Easy, Greetings. and we uh, we're here to do business. Well, you are in the right place. What oh, sort good. of business would you like to conduct? Uh, well, do you um, do you guys have armor? <laughs> yes, we have uh, many sorts of armor. What uh, what sort are you looking for? What do you have in like the lightweight um, variety? She uh, she shuffles through her uh, her paper and uh, pulls up a uh, like basically kind of like this leather bound book, like soft leather, like a, almost like a binder of of soft leather and. She kind of pulls it open and, and starts uh, sifting through the, the pages to find uh, the right spot. Uh, she says, uh, well, we do have a, a very well-made, um, freshly cured leather armor. We have, uh, on the a little bit higher end, we do have a nice set of studded leather armor that can also be dyed to a certain color with uh, with a day's notice and a little bit, a minor extra cost. Hmm. Um, what's like the, what's like the base cost for the studded leather without dyeing it? Well, for the studded leather army, it uh, looks like you're about 50 gold pieces. Hmm. I look to the guys and I'm like, do you, does, does studded make you, uh, does that make you, uh, not as stealthy? Like, would they hear, basically, would they hear a sir come in if she was wearing that armor? I don't believe so. I can assure you that our leather is oiled with the finest of oils and treated, uh, and made with the, the, uh, the finest of fits, uh, even for one of uh, extraordinary size. We can custom fit it as well, and you know, I can assure you that moving quietly will not be an issue. Oh, well, it's not for me, just in case you're wondering. Um, how much would it cost to, uh, to dye it? Uh, what color? Purple. You see like an arched eyebrow, like a kind of a sharp eyebrow shoot up and, and she says, well, purple is a, a, a rarer dye mm. uh, and harder to come by. Therefore, mm. to dye a, a, a full set of armor, I would estimate uh, 10 gold. Mm. It would be ready. And though by I might... Though, might I be so bold as to say that if you are wanting to move stealthily, as you said, perhaps purple is not the most stealthy of colors. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm. It's a good point. <sighs> you, and again, look to Stoic. What about, like, 
green or black. I think that'd be good for her. Um, that, that real tree camo. Yeah. I um, uh, <laughs> I quietly <laughs> am thinking about what a sword looks like in different armors and start to go a little red. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess black would be fine. We'll do black, black studded armor. Ah, black, fine choice. Well, that would be two gold. Oh, perfect, even better. Yeah, that sounds great. Then I can pick it up tomorrow, you said? Yes, uh, I will require half uh, now. Oh, sure. So for 52 gold total, that will be 26 gold. Okay, pull up my coin purse. Well, before you do that, Bear, uh, Madam, if we grouped a few other items with that purchase, may that sway that price a little bit? Perhaps. What do you? What else are you uh, seeking? We are also in need of a uh, crystal orb. Is this uh, for spell casting activities? It it would be, ma'am. Hmm. Give me just a moment, and she uh, she starts flipping through her uh, her binder again, and then you see her kind of frown, and and she says, uh, "Office, office," and she like yells, and you hear something in the back, just like <laughs> this crash in the back is uh, hurrying out uh, is like this kind of disheveled younger man, uh, like just kind of commonly dressed uh, where you can see he's, he's nicely dressed. It's, it's kind of common garb, but you can also see like where his shirt was like part <clears throat> was tucked in, but is now partially untucked. And he's just, uh, uh, yes, Cynthia, um, you, you called. Oh, Would you be a Dan bring out that new box to see, uh, we need to see if there's anything on there that has not been cataloged yet. Uh, uh, yes, yes, please. Okay. And he, he goes back in and you hear like a <laughs> <laughs> like he apparently trips over something and um, you see Cynthia kind of like standing there like straight backed and everything like that with this kind of like awkward small smile on her face as she's like waiting as silence is just in the room kind of waiting for this <laughs> uh, waiting for him to get back. Uh, anything else you require while he searches? Easy. Do you have anything? Oh yeah, I have a couple of items, uh, Fraulein, if you wouldn't mind looking up for me. Um, number one is a uh, decent-sized copper piece. Doesn't have to be too large. You know, it's just big enough to fit in the hand. Not like a copper as in currency, but like a real chunk of copper, and then. Um, a vial of sulfur and bat guano. Do you happen to have some of that on you? I have sulfur and what? A bat guano. <laughs> bat guan what? Guano. So bat bat crap. Bat oh. Uh, bat droppings. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't deal in raw metals here. I suggest mm. uh, the blacksmith or. There are many places that deal with that, although we don't have a copper mine nearby. Um, hmm. I would suggest a blacksmith. Uh, I'm sure copper is used in certain things. Um, hmm. I suppose you could also melt down some copper pennies um, as an option. Yeah, um, that's true. Pennies exist in this world? Well, they're, yeah, they're copper pieces. They're, they're oh, the copper. pennies of this world. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, it's like pence, you know? Yeah, pence. Yeah, more or less. Two pence. Um, Did we sing a song of six pence, perhaps? <laughs> Just me? Okay, I'll leave. I'll leave. Bye. Good night. I mean, <laughs> you could have a six pence, but you'd be none the richer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, yeah. um, <laughs> we're here all night, folks. We're here all <laughs> night. Keep your waitress. Uh, Only till 10 30. Okay. <laughs> Um, she says, uh, 
I'm afraid a, a vial of sulfur, maybe. Let me let me look. Uh... <laughs> Easy. What do you need uh, copper and sulfur and bat poop for anyway? Well, <clears throat> bat. Whenever you do the magics. Mm -hmm. Sometimes where things are needed in order to uh, make them accomplish the goal. Um, <clears throat> the copper? You know, to... the magics. <laughs> the magics. This is where the magic exactly. happens. And um, typically with the copper, I can help amplify the metal to know what's happening in someone's mind. Mm. That's how I can read some of your thoughts if I can. Now, the guano and the sulfur is what makes that big boom happen. As all well as the fire. Mm. One little bat dropping can can explode into a mess of <laughs> huh. fire. I had no idea bat pop bat droppings were that explosive. That's <laughs> why so you have to be very careful when you collect it. Mm. Good to know. Um. The let's see. Does it have on your uh, spell? Does it have a value on the sulfur? It does not. So it doesn't. Does that? Is that okay then? Yeah, you don't. You don't need. We'll say you found some, but like, yeah, that would be in your component pouch. Okay. Okay. My or, your, pouch. or your focus makes up for that. It's the. Yeah. I forget which way you're doing it. Uh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's only the ones that have like a a, a coin amount on it. Ah, okay, all right. So I'm good then. I'm yeah. good. <laughs> but she does say, like, I, I can assure you we do not carry anything fecal. I would suggest <laughs> either Angel's Apothecary, per perhaps, or I, mm. I hear there's a druid outside of town and they're unusual, so maybe they'd have something. Mm. Mm. Dog, guys, I appreciate your time. Well, something a little more... um. Might, style. might might you have a fiddle? Hmm. Hmm. And she she has this sort of like intrigued, surprise look at you, uh, at you saying that. And, uh, We've been traveling a lot lately, and the, the lights or the nights get lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna gonna get intimate with a fiddle. <laughs> They like they occupy the time, and they ease the soul. Thank you. Hmm. She uh, uh -huh. starts looking through her binder again, and uh, she says, "Ah, yes. Hold on one moment." And she uh, she goes off into the back, and uh, you know, a couple minutes later, uh, she comes back with um, two things. She comes back with a a, a box, like a wooden box. Um, that she, she places on the counter and, and opens it up. And inside you see uh, a violin that's got a, uh, a slightly more orangish color than you're uh, used to seeing, uh, but it's, it's kind of like this reddish orange color. It's really pretty and uh, looks to be pretty well made. Like it's a, a pretty nicely made uh, a violin. And All right. And she says, uh, yes, uh, this this piece uh, came in a few weeks ago, and um, it's finely crafted uh, from Targonia, I believe. Um, I'm afraid I don't have the maker's name on hand, but it is very well made, and uh, it's when it costs 25 gold pieces. That sounds like a fair deal. How much yeah. if your assistant finds that ball? What are you? Um, where's your Where's your head at with that? Well, she before she said well, before. So we also, as a courtesy, will throw in uh, this, and she she hands you a small book, which is basically on. Uh, it's basically a small book of common and popular songs. Yes, <laughs> I loves it. So. Oh, <clears throat> ma'am, you have brightened my day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is uh, that's why they call us the Shining Empire, I suppose. 
Is that one um, that have a uh, Baba ba Black Sheep in it? Haven't even looked at it yet, Bear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, as you, uh, as you, uh, after that, you hear this like scraping noise. <laughs> it's coming from the back. This. You see, kind of coming through the curtain, like uh, butt first. You see the the, the boy uh, Orpheus coming back, and he's dragging behind him this large, long crate, <laughs> and he just like is pulling it out. And you see, you see uh, Cynthia's mouth just kind of become this like pursed straight line, <laughs> and like. I asked him to do this, but this is obviously not what I had in mind. <laughs> As he like drags it through the curtain and actually it's long enough that he can't actually get it further than the edge of the counter. So it just kind of sits there blocking the doorway. Uh, That's some Amelia see... Bedelia level stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you see him kind of like standing there kind of panting a little bit and <laughs> just looking expectantly and Cynthia gives him like a long kind of measured look over her spectacles and then goes into the into the box and you can see there's a, a pile of, of different things. It seems to be a shipment that's just come in. It hasn't been sorted or um, collected. And um, you see, uh, you have just a number of things. You see some armor, you see some, some weaponry, you see some like scrolls, you see books, you see um, some sacks of things. You interestingly see a trident. Um, you see, um, you know, a, a variety of things. And she, uh, she kind of digs around the crate a little bit and, uh, is kind of like looking over and then she, she says, ah, and she pulls out like kind of wedged off from the side. She pulls out a sheet. It seems to be a sort of manifesto, uh, for it and kind of looks over it and, is, hmm, hmm. and then goes back in digging through this crate again and eventually produce like, pulling out a small uh, velvet uh, uh, sack like a small velvet bag and she pulls it out and sets it onto the onto the edge and carefully removes the velvet sack and you see uh, a kind of small maybe softball sized uh, crystal ball hmm. And she says, uh, yes, this one is, uh, this, this crystal ball is quite interesting. It was made in Vespa wind itself. So, you know, it'd be perfect for arcane activities. Is this, uh, satisfactory? Yes, ma'am. Do you happen to have the, the price for it? I do indeed. This would be, and she checks her manifest again. Uh, while you're looking, just curious, uh, do you know how much that uh, that trident is? I was going to ask, too. <laughs> um, she <laughs> says, uh, well, the crystal ball will be 20 gold. The, let's see, the trident. <laughs> are you thinking for yourself or for Valen? For me, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I see Valen use a staff and it doesn't have points on it. And this has three points. Yeah. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't use points. I use points. Have you seen what I use in battle? It says three points, like you said. <laughs> uh, okay. But I mean, fair, fair question, I suppose. I uh, just see you use bladed weapons. I didn't know you used pokey weapons. I get three points. Um, she, uh, she says, oh, this is quite interesting. This, uh, it seems to be there are several items that, um, have come through, uh, as, a they were acquired from the same place, uh, trading in the, in the petals. And, uh, it's quite interesting items, but it seems that they've, uh, had a little bit of trouble uh, selling them, and so there's actually been a, some discounted prices. Um, you know, and sometimes they send them around to different branches, seeing if they can, you know, they rotate through to see if they can 
sell or places. These, I believe, are having some trouble because perhaps not everyone has water-oriented purposes, I suppose. But um, the the item you mentioned is, uh, it's called a Trident of Fish Command. Of Fish what? Command? <clears throat> the Aquaman! <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's Aquaman's Fish story. Command? You're going to be you just say? as useful with it as Aquaman would be on land. That's right. It is, of course, a... It looks like... Uh, oh, this was acquired from from uh, the race tridents. Uh, quite exotic. Um, it seems to, of course, be a very well-balanced and, and uh, designed weapon that can be used one-handed, two-handed, or even thrown. It's uh, quite versatile, and this particular piece also is infused with ooh, very powerful magic. It apparently can, uh, s every so often, it can cast the spell Dominate Beast on a creature that ha that can swim, that, that uh, is aquatic nature. There's just a little bit of drool coming out of Bear's mouth right now. <laughs> As much water as there is around here, buddy. <laughs> Seems like this piece would normally go for 1,500 gold. It is discounted all the way down to 900. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It's so pretty. I would help you, Bear. I don't have that much, bud. Uh, How much do you need, about? Uh, about 600. No. Five, 550. I will lend 550 to Bear. You have 550 no, gold? Easy. No yeah. way! I haven't been spending gold at all. Oh. I haven't either. I still don't have that much. I just go over and like, I hug you. Oh, you're my <laughs> best friend. You're my best friend. You're my best friend. Wow. The desire oh. to... <laughs> just, what a weird thing to buy. <laughs> this is perfect. Hey, we bought an octopus squid thing. <laughs> We could have used True. that trident. I don't it think wasn't it was... a water dwelling creature. No, it, it was no. an underdark creature. Yep. Those are different. No, I'm <laughs> telling you, there's a lot of potential with this weapon. And oh, yeah. we never went to water during this whole campaign, and that trident just sat. <laughs> Bear has you water stab above up, above water stuff. Bear, you. Dang, we're gonna water. do a water adventure. I know it. I know it. We'll come back. Does anybody have water in their backstory? Nothing? Anybody? 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 Nope. nope, nope. I am from a desert. <laughs> He's from a mountain. <laughs> I'm from the mountains. That's the opposite of the water. So oh, I can't wait to be Aquaman. <laughs> I've, never even, I've never even seen an ocean. <laughs> um, do you, what? Thank you, Easy. But what? Uh, again, can you hand me the the bag of holding? I hand you the bag of holding, yeah. I pull out my, my morning star, the blue dragon. Would you be interested in a trade, um, Fair Sentha? Or at least a discount on the price a little more? Hmm. Uh, let, let me see it. Uh, she she takes it in her hand and, and uh, examines it as I try to look back at my notes from, like, 25 episodes ago. Yeah. More than that. That thing's been... You don't remember this? At least. <laughs> uh, let's see. Like that was sometime like middle of last year. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's actually a good question. Um, I'll have a question too once you get over this one. I think I paid like 100. No, maybe 200 for it. I think. If I remember correctly. That was the one with the dragon scales? Yeah, I call it the Blue Dragon of the North. Because you were naming it after the other thing that you couldn't buy. <laughs> because it was too expensive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one's blue. <laughs> make, a, make a persuasion check. Okie dokie. Persuasion. What we got? What we got? What we got? Tell her she's pretty and I cast guidance. <laughs> What do you what do you get for guidance? A D4? D4. <laughs> I go, you're pretty. And 
and uh, and I got a total twenty. Yes. What an inappropriate thing to say to someone that you're like. <laughs> what a horribly inappropriate thing to say. <laughs> You should have to subtract whatever that deep one was. He like carefully is looking over it, uh, like with a very trained eye um, for evaluating such things. And, and like you say that, she kind of like looks up at you, <laughs> just with again with that eyebrow kind of shooting up, uh, you know, for a moment. And then she looks back in and says, "Well, this uh, this does seem to be extremely well made. Where did you get it?" Oh, uh, dang it, brother. I think it's called Tawera Dragon. No, no, that's the magic shop. Anyway, somewhere in, uh, Eldowin. Ah, well, Eldowin. It's a shame we can't set up shop there. Mm. They're pretty snooty up that way. I don't, you're probably better off here. <laughs> Perhaps. It would be quite profitable if we could. However, well... This is very well made. Uh, I suppose. Uh, I suppose I could give you about seventy-five gold in trade. All right. There you go. Easy. Save you seventy-five gold. <laughs> so take seventy-five off of the uh, five fifty. Yeah. Um, what kind of weird Walmart situation doesn't allow somebody to like come into town and. Dang it, I'm not there to ask questions. Ugh. I didn't want to get into I my yeah, I I'm gonna ask um how much do you think this goes for? And I bring out the Wraith armor that we had left over from uh oh. the, Are you sure um, you want to get rid of this easy? Yeah. There's no reason to wear the Wraith armor. Look at me, look how skinny I am. Oh, that's fair. So the crush me. <laughs> Yeah. So what you so the to be clear, what you're calling wraith armor is effectively just like a chest piece and shoulder like pads. Um, yeah. Um, and you know it's just in this sort of jagged design, mm -hmm. uh, and you like clunk it up on the on the uh, on the the counter, and you know with this heavy like, <laughs> she's sort of like, well. Um, let me take a look and uh, she she looks over it carefully sort of like taking the edge of one of the points and like lifting it up to look underneath and what what sort of armor is this oh if you don't know what it is you can't afford it never mind <laughs> no i i um i say it's it's, it's um we got this from a dead wraith. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's, um, it doesn't seem to have any unusual properties to it. It doesn't even seem that well made. It seems to be solid iron. You might get more gold from melting it down and using the iron. Um, Perhaps a hobbyist who's into collecting such things, if you can find one. Unfortunately, we do not deal in that sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> I drag it back. <laughs> Trying to get it back. Into <laughs> this is really, it's way harder to get back in and take out. Thank you so much. I might uh, offer, we do have some scrolls, of uh, magical scrolls, if you're interested in such things. Hmm. What, has, what kind of scrolls do you have? Hmm. Well, let me, uh, let me look at her stock. And she pulls open her binder again and kind of flips <laughs> toward the back. Um, and she says, let's see. We have a scroll of Armor of Agathus. Uh, we have a scroll of Earth Tremor, uh, a scroll of Light, and a scroll of Illusory Script. Hmm. 
I'm interested. Uh, oh, and we do have do a, a scroll of Ray of Enfeeblement as well. Hmm. Does she know what they actually do? Or or it just is the names? Uh let's see. There's there's like she has essentially like a brief description, not like the full okay. thing. The armor okay. of Agathus, uh, let's see, it seems that uh, a sort of magical frost covers over you and you gain some, uh, temporarily gain some health, uh, if you were. Um, seems to, uh, ref- if a creature is close enough, it seems to re- reflect some damage back onto them. Um, Isn't that the one, though, where, like, once you cast it, though, you are pretty much, like, you can't do One shit shot. for a round. Like no no no. Like you you're you go down to zero for movement for the next turn and you get no, that's, like you're like haste. No but, mm, I feel like there was one that had like basically you cocoon yourself in ice and once it breaks it's like you can't move for a a turn because you you basically have now and you're more likely like you are disadvantaged. Something about like you're more prone to get hurt by heat right after and you can't move. Yeah. I, 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 it's not this one, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, then never yeah, this, mind. Never mind. I've is, been recently reading things. <laughs> this is this is five temporary hit points, and if a creature makes a melee attack against you, you it, it takes five cold damage. Ooh. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Ooh, let's see, the Earth Tremor. Uh, let's see, this causes a small earthquake, it seems. Uh, shaking the ground and dealing some damage and possibly knocking over people. Um, mm. and can also disrupt the terrain in a, in a way that you might find advantageous. So, basically when you cast this in an area, it's like a 10-foot area, people, they have to make a, a saving throw and they take, on a fail, they take 1d6 damage and are knocked prone. Um, if the area is loose earth or stone, it becomes difficult terrain. Um, yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Okay, it's pretty sweet. And then uh, illusory chaos. So just to, for the sake of time, you write on a parchment paper or some other, you know, writing material, uh, and you imbue it with an illusion. The last for the duration. So to you and creatures you designate when you cast the spell, the writing appears normal uh, and conveys whatever you were trying to convey. Uh, to all others, the writing appears as if it were written in an unknown or magical script that's unintelligible. Huh. Uh, alternatively, you can hmm. you cause the writing to appear to be an entirely different message written in a different hand and language, though the language must be one you know. Okay. Um, it can be dispelled. And true sight couldn't see it, but that's that's the idea. Okay. How much is the um, the armor of Agathus and the Earth Tremor? Oh, and the Ray of Enfeeblement is half damage. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an attack. Oh. It's a second level spell attack, basically. Uh, it's a ranged spell attack, and on the hit, uh, the target only deals half damage with weapon attacks that use strength until the spell ends. So it's kind of weakening uh, strength of these characters. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, the Armor of Agathis and Earth Tremor are each 120. So all these are each 120, you said? Uh, well, there, let's see. The Ray of Enfeeblement is 240. Ooh. The others are 20. Yeah, magic is expensive. Sh- <laughs> these are but one shot. Keep shots, in mind, right? is, well, so it's a scroll and they're one shots, but keep in mind you're a wizard. So you can, if you have the paper and the golden time, you're just, you know, go look at your rules again, but you've, you can transcribe them into your, your spell book. Your spell book, okay. Become known spells for you. Gotcha. It consumes the 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 scroll in the process, but that's how you learn spells is by collecting them. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I believe you have spells too that I don't think you've. I think you have scrolls you've gotten at some point. So. Uh huh. 
I think so. Yeah. Really? I think I, I think yeah, I we've like handed one. we've handed scrolls over to you yep. that we found in previous yeah. situations. I so don't have it on my list. Wizards do with their downtime and, and their money is transcribe. <sighs> yep. So you can gain spells. <laughs> what is what am I doing with my time? <laughs> You're not writing the crown that night. Like I didn't even know I had all, the scrolls. My bad. It's okay. We're only thirty four episodes in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a year. Still learning to be a wizard. Per- apparently, the uh, yep, yep. I'm learning okay. how to be a priest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take. I'll take the armor of Agathist. And I'll take the, oof, um, I'll take the earthquake one as well. Very good. Very so how much was that trident? The trident was 900. 900. Yeah, which he already spent, right? Yeah, he spent it. Well, well, I haven't bought it yet. But we, have, yeah. we haven't paid her yet. I've got. I've been keeping a tally, so I know how much we're into her for. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, she guys retrieves the skull, which are or scrolls, which are each in um, kind of small cases, like kind of nicely presented. Mm-hmm. Um, so you had that. You had the crystal ball, which is twenty. Uh, the the fiddle was twenty five. Uh, what else did you have? You had the the armor, the studded leather, which was fifty-two. Yeah, that was it, right? And the mm-hmm. trident. You didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trident. Is it triton or trident? Trident. Trident. Dent. Yeah. That's my favorite gun. <laughs> and I was trying to think of what the catchphrase their gum is it's, it's definitely not keep your mouth fresh it's the fresh one. mega the it's trident. clean is that what it is so, ma'am you sounded very interested in needing more inventory from where did you get that mace bear oh uh oh i just remember um impenetrable beauty uh yes um we do travel a lot and i was thinking you know at the start of this new relationship maybe for this whole group we could do 1100 with the promise of when we find treasures on our travels we would gladly bring them for you hmm well uh i believe we can enter into some sort of arrangement as for people who regularly find us the goods of a suitable quality um at above uh, above market value since we can we still have to be able to turn them around and sell them but we can for those who consistently deliver for us we are able to give better prices um, as someone who is new to us I am I'm afraid we don't have that established relationship yet. Mm-hmm. But uh, roll a persuasion check. Any of you guys helping me? <laughs> um, and and also, I'll pull out um, the vial of acid. <laughs> if we if we throw this in, that help lower the price as well. Is that uh, at least a good advantage. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> He says, I'm afraid I don't have any use for, for just plain acid. You know, might seek an alchemist or, or perhaps somebody else who might have use for that sort of thing. Okay. okay. That's a 16. Okay. Okay. I can live with that. <laughs> um, it says, I wouldn't be able to give you the, the normal partner prices, but how... Uh, Considering the purchase of the Trident, a quite an expensive item, and a wish to make an impression on what I hope will become a regular customer. 
Um, I'll reduce what was going to be, let's see, 1,237 gold pieces. I'll reduce to 1,150. I think that is fair and just. <laughs> Very good. That still seems like 100 bucks. <laughs> okay, okay. So are we doing this, like, wait, like, evenly? Or we're all just paying no, for I don't. Thing? I don't have that much money. My stuff was <laughs> only $45, but I'm going to oh. throw 50 because that's all I got. <laughs> so I'm throwing 50 at it. It's still 1100 so I, 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 how much would I be covering? I mean, I only have 400. Well, with the stuff that Easy gave you, you, if you cover your 900, then that just leaves 200 for Easy instead of 240. If he still gives you the 550. That's between you two. Are you able to help this me is out? When, with... This is when we all download the app and we just like Venmo. send each other. We just Venmo each other. <laughs> Are you oh, able she... to go? Sorry. I've got, that, I've got yeah. seven, I've got 798 total before I give it to you. Um, so that'd be what, five? All right. So let's. Uh... Yeah. As much as our views probably really want to sit, us, sit here and listen right. to this math. Nah, we'll yeah. <laughs> we'll it's essential D&D &D right now. You this is D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there anything else you want to do at, at this one? Nope. Okay. Wanted a crystal ball. Out of money. <laughs> yeah. So she uh, she she bids you adieu. And uh, as the the boy starts shoving the, the large crate back into the back. As you guys uh, exit back out, um, anywhere else you want to go? I do as we're walking. As I'm holding a new tri tri trident, I want to um, walk next to Easy. Uh, first of all, Easy, again, thank you so much for help with this purchase. I feel like it's going to come in handy. So many monsters we fight now. Of course. And also, speaking of that, you know how me, you and me are the best fighters in the battlefield? Absolutely. Mm, see, I knew you knew this. Yep. <laughs> I was wondering, you know, we seem to, whenever we fight, we don't really have a plan. We just kind of go in there and everybody does their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we seem to go in half cocked, if you will, yeah. Mm. Well, I see how you fight, and I see how you throw out some very powerful spells. But I also see that you, uh, you, you can get hit easily. Oh, yeah. I was thinking maybe me and you could team up and work together. I can watch your back as you throw out some really powerful spells, and then when someone comes up to in, in close range, I could, you know, take this new trident and stab him real good. Yeah, so, like we said before, back in a long time ago, if you'd be my bodyguard, I could be a long lost friend, yeah. You can call me Betty. <laughs> I don't call you out. Call me, call, you call me out, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, so, yes. okay, I will try and I'll stick like with this, you in the next round. I like this uh, symbiotic relationship, yeah. Right, right. Like this, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. I will stick with you next time. Make sure that no uh, nobody comes up to take you down. In return, I will protect you with some magics. Maybe this uh, I get the Christie armor will come in handy. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. I'm very bad at remembering names. I got the Christie armor just as good. <laughs> I get the Christie armor. <laughs> Every everyone's looking for the secret murderer, and That's somebody right. dies in the first act. <laughs> That's right. That's the key to it. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I mean, you are investigating disappearances. I mean, you know. Exactly. True. I'm like, this is an Agatha Christie. Yeah. It could come in handy is, right now. Is this an Agatha Christie novel, or is this a Pierrot novel, or are Pierrot. we? Or are we Sherlock? Which, which investigation are we in? Which uh, what's Murder in the Orient Express? Uh, Who is that? 
Isn't that Perot? Is that Perot? I thought that was Perot. It's all a, I know is it's not Murder, She Wrote. That's right. all I know. It's a George R. R. Martin, which means like three of you are going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and Pretty it's going to be the three favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the favorites. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Uh, okay. Anything else you guys want to do or go? That's that's it. I guess. Well, I guess I'll go to the apothecary. Or oh, wait, I'll go to the um. Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, the blacksmith to get the copper piece. Okay. Uh, yeah, he does have a, a you know some copper. Uh, you know that's. We'll say uh, to get how many pieces do you want? This so when I use the spell, does it consume that copper? Is that what happened? Yeah. Ah. Okay. Is that not just like your copper money? Does it not? Is, can you not just use a copper penny? It says copper piece. I don't know what that means it specifically. Yeah. Gold piece, silver piece, copper piece. They're all. That's what the money is called. Oh. Okay. All right then. <laughs> I guess. I exchange, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess, uh, I guess I'll do, I don't know, 20 copper. Okay. So two silver as like two silver. Very confused back blacksmith just takes two silver and hands you 20 <laughs> copper pieces. Easiest money he's made all day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 Oh, all right. It, it. <laughs> we got the best out of that deal easy because everybody knows that 20 is more than two. <laughs> That's right. Uh, looks like I made out like the bandit. Yeah. Uh, grog math. And you said you're going to the apothecary? Uh, yeah, to see if I can get money for the uh, for other things. I think we should. We've been out a while. I think maybe we should try and meet back up. What was the time? See if, see if they mm. want to go with us. Good point. At least before. Well, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have any money. I got this. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. oh. Okay. So you meet back up, still kind of in the square area. Uh, are you all wanting to go to the apothecary then? or are you, cool. you know? Side question. Does my violin box look like a violin box or does it look like a box? Just a box. Good. Okay. <laughs> Barry, you walking around with your trident? Sure am. <laughs> Whoa. Right. That's, uh, that is like a it, it fish out of water, if you'll excuse the <laughs> expression. Mm -hmm. I don't think I understand what you're saying, but isn't it pretty? It is something expressive in a way, mm -hmm. I guess. But think about it. So, okay. Picture but we gotta battle some goblins, okay? So they got like some goblins, okay? And there's three of them. It's like, boom, goblin, goblin, goblin. We go right here. And you're gobble, like, gobble, bear. Gobble. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, you're like, bear. Can you get those three goblins? Normally, I'd be like, sure, give me three swings of my sword. This time, I throw my trident, and I got a point for each goblin. That is not how physics works. See, the... The trident is like this wide. Right. Mm -hmm. The goblin body is about this wide. So you're not attacking three goblins. You're attacking one goblin with three pointy bits. Even regardless, that's three holes versus versus one hole. <laughs> three is more than one. He's, three his math one. tracks. You are not wrong. deny his math on that one, you know? Well, I mean, at least you guys didn't spend that much money on it, right? I mean... No. Yes. Uh, that uh, is not worth more than a hundred gold. A hundred gold? You think this is a... This thing can 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 command fishes? This I thing... I start looking around for fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, when we fight in an ocean, you're going to be begging me to pull on my trident. I don't beg for anyone to pull anything out, so, oh, um, sure, sure. no. Uh, 
I, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. You hear. It's you a very. <laughs> you hear a small voice uh, next to you go. You're gonna need a really big salad for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just nod and I'm like, mm-hmm. 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 Um, you obviously don't eat salads with this. You eat you eat meat with this. Unless you're a vegetarian. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'm not. I eat meat. <laughs> okay. The apothecary? Was that uh, where everyone needed to go next? Like yes, I let let us let, let us just <clears throat> finish up our shopping trip very quickly, and I'm gonna look over to Valen and be like, "We can never leave these boys alone ever again." Uh, <laughs> I, 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 yes, you should tell her about the armor. Oh, oh. also, Asura. <clears throat> yes. Tomorrow, I'll have a gift for you that will help you uh, not get hit as much or take the hits better. Oh. Okay. I don't know if I like the sound of that. That's an odd way of phrasing that. Is, isn't, yes, your, uh, I... isn't your favorite color black? Or no, it's purple. But black you like too, right? I do like the color black, yes. It is very both slimming, and oh. it is also hard to see in dim light. Perfect. You are going to love this. Tomorrow, I can't give it to you right now, but tomorrow I'll give you something really nice. Is it expensive? Are there diamonds on it? It better be. It's a good. It's a gift, right? Exactly. Can be I wear really it on expensive. my head? Wait, the wait, most whoa, expensive. Wait. So a gift for you has to be expensive, but something I buy for myself, well, the easy ball for me, can't be expensive. <laughs> oh, so easy is willing to put down the high value money for you as a gift, <laughs> but I am not worth the same. I, I bought for what it was worth. It's a very nice piece of armor. Oh, it's a piece of armor. Yeah. <laughs> that is lovely. Uh, that oh, is yeah. so nice. You're I wrong. could have bought that for myself, but I appreciate that nonetheless. Actually, speaking of that, <clears throat> I, I'll get this armor for you, but we can't really afford our rent and food anymore. I don't know if you could <laughs> help us out with that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, co- I'll cover our rooms, Bear. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Then yeah, the armor is yours for free. <laughs> I feel like this is going to cost me way more in the end. I have a strong feeling. What do you mean? Just to help you out. It's gonna protect yeah, you. Yes, no, it's it's. Oh. I appreciate the sentiment. That is so very kind of you. I very mm. much appreciate it. Dear God in heaven. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like those is... messed up parents that buy their kid a car, and it's like, congratulations, I bought you a car. Your payments are four hundred a month, and your insurance is another three on top. Of it. <laughs> but hey, you didn't have to go through the fun of picking it out. Congratulations! That's just, like, that's just like us. Hey, here are some houses for you, but you owe us money for these houses. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right. So okay. you guys start making your way towards the apothecary as um, as storm settles on Valen's shoulder, and you hear this little yawn. She's like, today's been exhausting. <laughs> like, you know how many buckets of water I have set up on doors that were partially open? And the water's <laughs> really heavy. <laughs> it's really heavy. Well, you know what's really interesting? If the bucket falls on anybody, a uh, bear here can talk to it now because it will be a water-dwelling creature. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? I don't think so. You don't know it how it works. Makes sense to me. It. I mean, just because you buy it doesn't mean you have to know everything about it. I'll figure it out as it's going along. Sound life theory. That's that is that is adulting one hundred and one. No, it's what I do. As go along. Yeah, that's what most of us do. Yeah, make yeah. it up as we go along. Mm-hmm. What else would you do? That's what I'm saying. And I'm like over here, like I've got ledgers on ledgers on ledgers of like quantity, cost, value, high <laughs> value items. <laughs> um, yeah. By the way, uh, Bear, you can yeah. look and add. There is a trident of fish command in 
Dandy Beyond, so you can yeah, look it up. I, I added it. I, I assume right. I'm walking around and I'm like, I'm, this is my attunement as I walk around with it. Uh, <laughs> now you, you'll need to do a short rest to attune to it. But. Okay, I guess when y'all, I'll go to whenever whenever you go to people's not people angels apothecary. I'll just wait for y'all to come outside. I'll just stay with my trident. Just sitting on a bench for the trident. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at it. Just, just so good. Okay. So you guys eventually make your way to uh, Angel's Apothecary, and uh, you see a, a, a sign that's that's just wooden with kind of carving into it, uh, with with nice lettering. And you see sort of vines kind of grown over. Uh, and around the sign, um, and you open the door and and go in, and immediately you're greeted by the scent of you know a hundred different things, um, just the smell of of soil and of herbs and spices, and uh, it's just a very kind of it's not overwhelming, but it's it's uh, very unique because you're just it's just this combined smell. Um, and you're and you see some shelves with just plants and uh, uh, jars that are open and, and uh, lots of things in there. You get this compared to Palesa's shop in Elduin, this which is very kind of organized and neat. This one is like wild, like you feel <laughs> like you almost walked into a forest. It's just there's just lots of, of scents, and you hear the sound of running water somewhere. But you can't quite locate where it is, and um, just that fresh smell of a whole a whole bunch of different things. And uh, behind the counter, you see a uh, kind of thin, old, older-looking elf. Um, looks like a high elf um, with uh, long hair all the way down, like past her knees. Um, who uh, looks elderly and looks uh, like the, this long white hair um, with kind of like uh, wrinkled skin and, and very pronounced kind of smile lines around her eyes, um, you know, and some kind of speckled brown eyes as she uh, she sees you guys enter and she uh, and she says, "Well, hello there." Welcome to my shop. This is Angel's Apothecary, and I am Hildena, but Angel is my nickname, hence the name of the shop. I offer all sorts of herbs and remedies for many ailments, as well as minor healing services. Should you need it? Well, Angel, I also make oh. and sell fine rope. <laughs> rope. And I make my very own strawberry tea. The best in Lesser. Probably in all the Valgar. Hmm. Well, Angel, it is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I am very interested in that strawberry tea that you mentioned. Well, in that case, you might also be interested in my own mix of pine cone tea, which is said to extend one's life. I've drank it every day for centuries, and I've lived to a ripe old age of 696. You've Which is quite a over four hundred time. Yes. I also I be... make and jar my own good berry preserves. Mm -hmm. And also I make my own acorn butter. Freshly pasted and sweetened with wild honey. That all sounds absolutely delicious. Yes. So it perks up at the good berry preserve. 
<laughs> um, does it still have, does the preserve have the same effects as the good berries? Uh, to a degree, it has healing properties. Um, it takes a little bit more time to consume than a good berry would, but it lasts longer as a good berry doesn't last very long, you know, of course, you know. Um, in short, the good berry preserves is about 10 HP worth for a jar. So it's like um, the whole spell of good berries. Sort of, yeah. It, it, okay. It's You consume it in about 10 minutes. Um, Oof. You could take a like a, a, a bit of it in your mouth as an action for one HP. Like as a, I'd let you do it as a bonus action, but mm -hmm. um, it's mainly not for in combat usage. You can't just like dig your hand in there. Oh, that's just... what I was thinking. <laughs> I know. I would love to see us like mid combat. Someone's like, <laughs> <laughs> taking a piece of bread. I spread just... it on the bread. <laughs> sandwich. Yeah, just making some toast. You know, just trying to combat. preserve. You know. There's only one way to find out. How much is that preserve, madam? Oh, it's they I, I typically price it at 65 gold per job. And I'm sure it's delicious. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How many jars would you like? I, I will I will pass for today. Thank you. Um no. that, I don't eat that well. Okay. Well, if you should have money and want to not waste my time, feel free to come back. <laughs> um, uh, Angel, I would, uh, I would very much like to be interested in your strawberry tea as well as your, um, you said your pine cone tea. Oh yes, yes. Mm. Well, uh, and she goes and she kind of. Sifts around and comes with like a, a little small, um, a little small bag of each. Um, one of them in kind of a reddish, like a dyed reddish bag, and another one that's just brown. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they're basically about a silver each uh, for about ten servings. Okay, and. Um... I'm, I'm going to whisper her to her so Stoic can't hear. Um, if you could also wrap up one of the good berry jars as a gift. Very hush hush. And she, uh, she, uh, she puts that, she gives you the, the packets of tea, so it'll be two silver. Um, and she gives you the, the good berry preserves, kind of like trying to slyly give it to you, which is just the jar, like a glass jar with a ribbon tied around it. <laughs> Can I help her with some sleight of hand action? <laughs> sure. Yes. Uh, 16. And she rolled a nat 20. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes, so, this old lady. Come at me, queen. As as you are like kind of waiting there expecting expectantly waiting she sort of like she does one of these numbers and kind of like and you like reach down and feel in one of your like little satchels on your belt and you feel a jar in there <laughs> and you realize you this she did this right in front of you <laughs> while you And I knew you she was going to do it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I just am like, I'm just kind of impressed and a little bewildered. I'm just like, thank you. You're quite welcome, dear. Is there anything else that I can get you? Uh, I am fine at the moment, gentlemen. I have a few questions, Fraulein. Miss Angel, yeah. Yes. From elf to elf, yeah. What do you think you can do with this? And I bring out... Um, the uh, dragon's blood in a vial. Ooh. Yep, yep. They're looking for an apothecary to talk to. <laughs> Can't talk to our friend Palessa, but... Yeah. No. 
<laughs> I, I see. I see. It's because it's because she's not an elf. I see. I see. That's I right. See here. Oh, that's right. Oh, <laughs> that cuts deep. <laughs> that cuts deep. First cuts the deepest. <laughs> Ever since Doug talked about the Duke earlier, I can't get out of my head that it's not the Duke, it's Dude I Know. Duke I Know. Dude I Know. Dude I Know. Dude I Know. It's like when he said it, I was like, I had to take a, I had to double take to make sure I didn't just hear you. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 he's a dude I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This country's ran by a dude I know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Make a make a persuasion check. Ooh wee. Ooh boy. All right, all right. I'm feeling good about this. Uh, that is a seventeen. Okay. Not bad. She takes it and, and kind of like swirls it a little bit and you can see it's kind of coagulating a little bit on the top, um, mm -hmm. but it's still somewhat liquid um, a little bit further down. Um, and she says, well, well, I've not seen something like this in quite a long time. Mm -hmm. What color was he or she? She was the black dragon. Oh. That must have been quite the story. Indeed it was, yeah. It was not an easy battle for me, but we were able to mm. vanquish him. <clears throat> well, Let's see. <clears throat> well, I suppose this seems to be somewhat fresh, even. This can be used occasionally in certain ritual practices and uh, occasionally has other properties and mixed in with certain things for certain potions. And, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it takes time, and this is obviously a rare commodity. Well, ah, for this amount, uh, I suppose I could give you... Um, 110 gold? Insight check. <laughs> All right, I guess he's doing it. I guess, I'm not going to do insight check. I'll let's do it. You should get try and rip him off. What did you get? 20. Total Ooh. 20. Woof. Total 20, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got okay. a plus six. It was 14. Dang, yeah. son. It's pretty good. You are a human I'm lie like detector. I'm a human lie detector, and I just haven't been using it because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot that I can tell if people are lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> me and Easy are dangerous team because he's charismatic. Or charisma. Yeah. I can't convince people of shit, but I can, <laughs> I can read them. <laughs> you read them well. I just can't convince them of stuff. So, the impression you get is that she is generally being honest, like the usages and just kind of that it is a rare thing. Um, mm -hmm. She does seem to be a little bit shrewder than you than you get the like that she lets on, although it's not entirely an act. Um, it's not, well, it's not really an act. It's just she's been around for a long time, so she still has some shrewdness she's gained over the years. It's good business, but, not ill intent. Exactly. She, okay, exactly. She's, you know, she's offering a fair price that might be lower than you want, but, like, she's she's got to do something with it, so she's just offering a price. You know? hmm. I think that's a fair deal, Easy. I don't know how to make potions, so I think this is a good deal. Um, and I go ahead and, uh, and I'll sell it for 110 gold. All right. She takes it. Cool. All right. 
And um, would you have any use for Wraith armor, Fraulein? <laughs> Excuse me, Izzy, are you trying to sell my wraith armor? Oh, this is your wraith armor? <laughs> I believe I'm the only one who has ever even been inside of a blacksmith with intent to actually be a blacksmith. If you also use this wraith armor, I don't know, it's kind of big and clunky. It doesn't quite fit you, Fraulein. <laughs> so I said I was going to wear it. <laughs> It is a chunk of metal. Do you understand how easily feats. you can melt you can melt down metal and do something with it? Is this really heavy? <laughs> Just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm afraid I don't have much use for armor. It's oh, not okay. my trade. That's a problem then. I won't buy also your NZ more. Would you like some acorn butter? Freshly pasted and sweetened with wild honey. Why if we try a sample first? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Casco. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Ooh. I am not persuasive. So let's see how this goes. I have a negative one on my persuasion. Shit. Do a hair oh, do a hair not... flip. Do a hair flip. Wow. Uh 15. Rolled a 16. Wow. Nice. Wow. Bad for, for I just have a little hair flip in there at the end. Just that's a most <laughs> unusual. <laughs> that is how you that's... do a hair flip. <laughs> <laughs> the whole wig comes off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is a most unusual request, but I do happen to have some that I just finished mixing that I suppose I could take just a bit. And uh, she makes her way back into the back of the shop and then comes back with a, <clears throat> a, a, like a little small wooden spoon with just a little bit of it on it and she hands it to you. Yeah, I, take, I taste it. How does it taste? So, acorn is not known for its flavor properties. It mm -hmm. is um, it is bitter, um, and you get the taste of honey is taking some of the edge of that bitterness off, but not all of it. It is it is not the best tasting thing you've ever had for sure. This is certainly a unique flavor. Um, Yes, I, indeed. <laughs> I do not believe it is something that I, it's not going to, we're going to be traveling to a lot of places that may not carry well. So perhaps when we come back through, <laughs> might, yes. Well, that's, that's quite all right. It takes time to develop the palate for good natural foods. You are correct, madam. <laughs> Y'all are some awkward shoppers. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, she takes the spoon back from me. And is that all you want from here? Are we, are we good? Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you mentioned that you had um, the ability to do some minor healing. Is that through... That's right visits do we need to come to you or is that something that we can pick up oh um well i do have the capability of making potions for that sort of thing with a bit of notice um about a day but uh i i do have some small abilities myself that I might be able to make you service. One of you feeling ill? Uh, it was more of a question since we are new to town. So, you know, it's always just kind of nice to know where to get some help in case you need it, you know? Well, of course. If you need anything along those lines or along the lines of 
good natural earthy foods and, and spices and teas and preserves and butters and even wines and occasionally juices when in season. Um, all of them natural and produced by myself. Is, uh, is this is... Whole Foods? <laughs> <laughs> Not, you've been so kind to us and we really do need to go, but I do have one final request. Do you, I assume you have vials? Vials? Or otherwise, yes, glass vials. Oh, yes. Yes, of, of, of course. Um, also, do you have any good oils, purified oils? Uh, let's see. For, for lamps and whatnot, it's no worry. Just yeah. if I could get maybe 10 empty vials and 10 vials full of oil. Okay. Do you want to, is your hair getting dry and you need to get it nice and jerry curled again? <laughs> Ooh, are you trying to do 10 vials worth of oil? Uh, no, 10, 10 empties and 10 vials worth of oil. Okay. 10 I plan to fill with water. 20 I just want filled with oil and I'm going to bless the lot. Okay. There you go. So um, we, I have holy hand grenades. <laughs> <laughs> hand grenades. Uh, the oils, I believe, you can't put water on your weapons, but you should be able to coat your weapons with oil. Mm -hmm. Holy oil. And the water, I should be able to throw the vial. Like holy water? Yeah, mm -hmm. because I have a spell called Ceremony where I can actually create holy water. And That's something they use for like vampires, right? Is that ever for undead? Undead, yeah. Oh. And we tend to run into a lot of those. We do, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are indeed. currently. <laughs> I end up on the trail of some, and the pool shall be three no more. <laughs> no. Like, I just I don't have anything to put the water in. Like if I get some some glass vials, that'll break. Five is right out. <laughs> the number right. being um, two, unless the <laughs> so the vials are one gold each, so it'd be twenty oh. gold plus uh, the oils, pretty cheap, maybe two silver to to get ten vials worth of oil. So okay, so it'd be it'd be twenty gold to get twenty vials and twenty and two silver. And, okay, I I can I can do that. I'll I'll lend ten gold to uh to the stoic. I I refuse to take it. I may not have much <laughs> how much you just spent. Um, I got it. Thank you. I just sold the dragon's blood. That's that's all of ours. You did. You did, and I I feel much better with you holding on to the group funds. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hold on to that for us and. Easier. We did slay that dragon as a group. <laughs> we did. We did slay the dragon as a group. <laughs> Couldn't get the blood without you guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. So with uh, with that and your your purchases complete, you you uh, say goodbye and uh, make your way back out into the street. By this time, it's starting to like the sun is just starting to set. So. Uh, Getting to dusk here. Uh, what do you want to do? Well, it appears that we it's head... time to, yes, head back to get to our meeting with um, mm. had them. Yes. So you're so, gonna go meet with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so just so, so we can understand, <laughs> Stoic, you're going to uh, use your crystal ball, and Storm, are you around, Storm? <clears throat> uh, what what you see she's like curled up on valen's shoulder like <laughs> taking a nap basically just, what 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 oh sorry i didn't mean to start you um i just want to make sure you're still good to uh spy on haddon tonight for us who you you'll see we're gonna be there in just a second but can okay you... oh all right okay go back to sleep thank you well, I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep now. Oh. 
Well, my bad. I just want to make sure you were still still able to uh, just pick on this conversation for us tonight. And, you know, throw the boots up with the wine as much as you want. That sounds hilarious. So you just want me to listen? Yes. To your conversation? No. To another conversation when we will not be there. Okay. <laughs> what conversation? <laughs> no, all right. We're getting ready to go meet a guy. And yeah. we'll point him out to you and basically just listen to what that guy does for for the for however, as long as you can. Hopefully the rest of the night. Oh. Is that how how long is the night? Um uh, how long is too long for you? <laughs> Four minutes. <laughs> know how to time is really weird here so i don't well you you just stay as long as you can maybe maybe go back pour more wine in his shoes just continuously visit him throughout the night let us know what you oh, find oh yeah out. wine in the shoes i remember that That's right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could or feather <laughs> or feather yeah <laughs> okay okay maybe one in each Yes. You usually have two shoes. True. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, yes. It seems like a lot of people wear shoes around this this place. Yes, they are very common. I mean, I've never understood it. But then I guess I don't spend that much time on the ground. Yes, you see, if you spend a lot of time on the ground, you end up hurting your feet if you don't have shoes on. <laughs> well, then why do you spend that much time on the ground? Uh... I am not blessed with the ability to not be on the ground. And sometimes I hit the ground really hard. <clears throat> well, you should talk to your mom about that. I would love to. I have no idea who she is. <laughs> well. Well, I guess my mom might adopt you. You know that is very kind of you, and I have considered it, but I think <laughs> I've gone this long without having one. Perhaps, perhaps I am destined to not have one. Uh, sure. I don't know what dest. Okay. <laughs> I guess if you like wearing shoes that much, fine. No, I guess you don't it's... need a mom. <laughs> I don't know um... what the comparison is. I happen to like my shoes. They are very fashionable. And I'm like, I got these like nice, like black lace up, like tight fitting leather boots. You get the Nikes? I got the Nikes and. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> can pump them up. <laughs> Her Nikes. Uh, she looks at him and she's like, Looks like armor. Yes, it's very pretty, isn't it? I don't know if pretty is what I would say. More like a dead well, animal. Yes, I find dead animals very attractive when they're put on my body. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stormer, I think you'd like my village. It's a little too cold in the winter, but during the summer, you don't have to wear shoes. It's very nice, actually. Well, I don't have to wear shoes anyway, so. Oh, well, during the winter, you'll be fine there, too. I mean, it, it is a little chilly, but mm, might be all right. Maybe. It was really cold in the Winter Queen's Court, but I didn't, we didn't stay there very long. Hmm. So I don't it know. Because it was cold or because you didn't like the Winter Queen? Maybe both. Yes. She's sometimes not very nice. Mm. Mm. Sorry about that. Oh, I, it didn't bother me. Oh, good. I like her court. They like to get into trouble a lot. Ah. That would make sense. 
Yeah. Hmm. So I'm bored. Jeez. Aren't we all? <laughs> um, <laughs> at the risk of getting in the death loop, do we have any mm-hmm. idea what we plan to say to um, Hedum? Well, that's what I was getting at. If you're going to do your spell and she's going to do her thing, I remember I was going to use a zone of truth tonight to figure out who the cult is, but I'm not sure that's a great idea at the moment. It's risky. I know. Especially because the last time one of us was inside any sort of truth, uh, he made a new friend. Right. Right. I did. Um, By the way, can we talk about that yet, or is it still kind of hush-hush? I don't think it ever goes away. Oh, okay. Well, then, never mind. Um, so, m- my thought was, if the old man in the warehouse is right, Hedem is just the face, and he's not the one actually pulling the strings. And if we give him enough information to stir him without revealing too much of ourselves, he may take that information back to whoever is Mm. pulling the strings. So if we, if either Storm helps us out and follows him, or I try our new crystal ball and try to spy on him after the meeting, we may find out who he's entrusting that information to. Well, yeah. Just I like that plan. Yes, I'm more curious about what he would say when we are not there than what he's going to say while we are there. I am too, but I just don't know what information to give him because we, we want to give him enough to make him run to whoever's in charge, but not give him enough to get us in jail, I guess. And I don't know where that line is. I've, mm-hmm. I've tried, I've tried those types of conversations and they've never turned out quite well for me. So I don't <laughs> feel comfortable being the one to have it. Could we not just, uh-uh. could we not just tell him that we, uh, on our investigation of the goblins, we uh, we heard about a cult in town, in the sheds. Yeah. I think the specific word might be crossing the boundary. So don't say cult? I think we need to circle the idea without actually touching it. Okay. And as we all know, I'm very good at circling things. <laughs> yes. yes. Without ever getting to any point about anything. Agreed. It's probably best not to let him think that we've gotten this far along in such a maybe short amount of time mm. and feign some ignorance, which would not be very hard for us. We are very ignorant. Mm. Should we mention about the blood, though, that we found in the alleyway? I think I think we should, if we, because it's that's pretty recent, and most I'm sure he's aware of it, and so it wouldn't be odd for us to be hunting goblins and hearing there was an attack in town, and so we investigated and found it wasn't goblins. But that it was robed men <clears throat> that and we could ask him if he would like us to add that to our investigation should we mention the robed men or should we just say that we found blood in a trail that led outward and perchance the goblins are getting bold and coming further into town I think it'd be interesting to see what he says if we ask him if we should be on the lookout for that as well as the goblins we're searching for. So we should mention the the cloaked individuals? I mean, it's up to you. To me, I think that would be enough to spook him. I would just be afraid of our new friend that we met out there 
being mm. tracked back to the information. With knuckle bones? Mm-hmm. He has a loud mouth. Mm. Should we kill him? Yes. Uh, you can take care of that with your new trident bear. Uh, that would be a good test of it. Bear, I don't know much about your oath, but I have a strong <laughs> belief that just murdering loudmouths is not one of the oaths that you have signed off on. Well, I mean, actually, I'm supposed to stop evil wherever it is at whatever cost, so... So being a loudmouth is evil? No, 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 but like stopping evil. He's not the evil, no. but if I keep him from talking to get evil stopped... I feel like at best that's a... A heavy gray area. Yeah, that's a that's dark, buddy. Oh, <laughs> listen, I have tortured people for money, and even I won't do that. <laughs> okay, just saying, the options are there. We need to. He is a dumb homeless man who just happened to see something he shouldn't have. Right. I'm not saying it's like good, but it's you know, sometimes you gotta do gritty things. Perhaps let's table that. Okay. Yes. Um, All right. So who's actually talking here? I, am I the one talking? Who's talking? I just I need to figure this out. Uh, I like to do a lot of talking, but if I need to shut up, I will shut up. I honestly think it would be you or easy. <laughs> <laughs> easy. You got some gabs on you, man. I will give you that. But sometimes and some gabs. You've got some delicious legs. Let me just tell you, you that. I've seen your rope fly up before. Dangerous, very places. nice legs. Um, you know, dangerous. The flavor, spice of life. You know, it's my it's my motto. <laughs> okay, so yay to robes, nay to robes. I I think it's fine, but I vote as yay. To me, as little yeah. information as we can give him and let him possibly hang Make himself. his own conclusions. Yes, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and hang himself to some degree. Like, we can... Well, we know someone who makes things. rope. Maybe we can just get that and he can hang himself. <laughs> Make our jobs a lot <laughs> easier, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I'm hesitant to give a lot of information just because I think... The more information that we can get from him, whether it's intentional or unintentional, might paint a more clear picture of who he is in this whole mess that's in this town. I just is don't he... want to get myself. I I just I don't know what kind of tomfoolery that he has in this place, but I don't want to get caught in a situation. Right, because he could he might be the puppet, or he might be the puppeteer, and he's just playing it off really well. But with every good puppeteer, there could be more than one puppet. A story is not told by a single puppet. I will be as vague as possible, provide as little information as possible, let him make conclusions, and we will see what happens trust you yep. i botched Got every him. single one of these situations so <laughs> i <laughs> we i think we have discovered that we are all very good at botching situations <laughs> last time i tried to cast a spell in secret and it didn't work so great so <laughs> me so hot well next time at least let us know before you're going to do it hmm? <laughs> It's like when I tap Maybe. on his shoulder before I go invisible now these days. Mm -hmm. So I at least tell them like, hey, I'm going to sneak away. No, 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 easy. My my spells work very differently because mine are faith-based, but I do believe in your grimoire, there's letters next to your spell that designate <laughs> and sight and hand movements. <laughs> and what might go to school for this. Spell, <laughs> Rating is not. 
the top thing on my list of studies every night. Um, a good. You you did graduate, oh. yes. I don't read. I just do. I graduated. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> <"What?" laughs> See, now you're speaking my language, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> oh bless us. Readings for chumps. <laughs> Of all, of all the people I could have met in a dirty tavern in Karandia, it was you, Lux. Mm-hmm. No. Seas get degrees, yeah. Jesus! I get the innate feeling that we're the breakfast club. Like, we're all just a bunch of teenagers. I know some of us are really old, but we're all just teenagers, like, finding ourselves. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Uh-huh. You're not. I like. I think Bear is the oldest one of us. Oh yeah. man, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm a newbie in this world. Yes, I'm. I'm like the the forty year old um, virgin senior who keeps like just getting held back. <laughs> well, all right. I get older, but they stay the same age. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Uh, this was, uh, all right, so you guys, uh, you know, after having this conversation as you make your way through uh, the town and everything, um, you uh, make your way uh, into the back into like past the guard at the at the gates and into the, the people's hall again, and <clears throat> enter in, and, and it's you know there's a lot fewer people this time. It's uh, you know, there's there's still about three people. You know, one in front of the the town leader, and a couple more kind of sitting there waiting still, uh, as they're kind of like getting toward the end of what they've allowed for today's you know issues uh, to be resolved. And um, you still see guards kind of lining the walls on each side, um, and the same five individuals sitting up at the table, and uh, this time with another individual standing. Uh, behind them, kind of to the side, uh, very kind of hulking um, man who's got this mix of like iron and leather armor, um, you know, that's got this kind of very rugged design. Uh, as he has these kind of pale dreadlocks that are like pulled back into a into like a very <laughs> thick uh, kind of dreadlock ponytail. Uh, behind him and with kind of hard line face with, with grayish skin uh, and pointed ears and you know it, it's you realize it's kind of a strange look at first and you realize that he seems to have some Goliath traits and some elf traits um, <clears throat> uh, with a Kind of a large, kind of long-handled, two-handled battle axe strapped to his to his back, uh, as he stands there with his arms crossed, just kind of like watching, uh, watching with these gray eyes, uh, watching the proceedings, and then kind of like sharply looking you guys over as you enter. As you take your place to uh, wait, um, while the uh, the, the remaining three people kind of make through their, their issues. Uh, we're going to take a break. So. <laughs> All right. Why are there so uh, many Goliaths and Lessa? <laughs> I love it. They already met all your friends. I know. Doug, I just want to say thank you because I've always wondered, like, why do other races only breed with humans? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah it's always kind of bugged me. So thank yeah. you for that present. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually thought that too, because they don't really, per- I mean, and to be fair in our game, when you're designing a game, you can't come up with every permutation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. I get it, but it's still I'm just, it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But that definitely I'm happens. very excited when Asura and uh, Stoic have children. <laughs> <laughs> the teethling orc. Uh-huh. So they can have both. They can have both the tusks and the horns. <laughs> and I'm ha- I'm only half orc. So orklings. Like... <laughs> orklings. Oh man. Oh, they're gonna one of them out of straw. Yeah, gonna be oh, gosh. Stoic, you're gonna be Stoic, You're gonna be such a beautiful mother. <laughs> oh, that hits the backstory. Oh, oh, that hits the backstory. <laughs> 
All right. So uh, we'll take about 10 minutes and then we'll come back to see what happens. See you in a bit. For some of us, this is an all too common RPG moment. The Nat 20s don't seem to roll as much as they used to. But you don't need to stress those critical fails anymore. Introducing Diagra, a dice performance drug designed for you to continue role-playing well into the night. Side effects of Diagra include obsessive consumption of Cool Ranch Doritos and Code Red Mountain Dew. If you experience natural 20s lasting longer than three sessions, be sure to brag about it in the chat rooms. Next time you roll for initiative, consider talking to your dungeon master about Diagra, because you can't always rely on your bard for inspiration. All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully is a good, uh, good little break there. I never know what to say after the breaks. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to report, went, nothing new to say. You know? And you we, peed we, and you had a good break. We know what to say. Thank you. A mm-hmm. solid movement. Yeah. Yep. Oh, God. Okay. Hope everything came <laughs> well, out hope, all right. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the new Diagra commercial. Yes. <laughs> and the niggas with Advantage Roll. <laughs> oh, no, it is Advantage Roll. Advantage Roll. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is a, the, that's, that's the, the chemical the, name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, just, Doug, every time we come back, just go, you pooping? <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll uh, get back into it as you guys are sitting there waiting uh, in the People's Hall for uh, the last kind of straggling people uh, presenting their issues to the town leader and the other group, uh, individuals. Um, yeah, it takes a, probably another 30, 40 minutes to get through those last few people um, as it gets dark outside and uh, you see like through some of the windows up, up high, you see the, the sun kind of fading and uh, as they light more torches around the room to uh, keep it well lit, uh, <clears throat> you see uh, the last individual finally leaves and the town leader kind of talks you know, they all kind of stand up and talk for just a couple minutes, and then the other individuals who are gathered around the table, uh, the other four, uh, they all kind of file out, um, exiting the room for the evening, uh, where the, the town leader and the, the kind of bigger individual who is standing to the side uh, remain, as well as all the guards kind of posted around the room. Uh, Do I still the, see the guard from earlier today? The one that uh, had the little happenstance. Uh, yeah, he's still there. Okay. Eyeing you guys very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> as uh, as you guys uh, approach the as he as the town leader beckons you forward and uh, your approach, he retakes his seat behind the table alone this time, um, and uh, says, "Well." Uh, welcome back. I trust you had a, a very good day in, in our town. Yes, thank you. It was very, very, very good day. Oh. Uh, we had the opportunity to uh, engage in local commerce uh, by going to some shops. Uh, so it was Excellent. very lovely. Yes. Excellent. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I do apologize. I do not know the uh, individual standing bes- uh, beside you. Oh, but of course. This is Captain Varesh. He, he gestures to the man who just looks at you, doesn't say anything. Just Captain, it is, a, it is a pleasure. I would like to start by apologizing uh, for an encounter this morning with one of your men, and I'm going to gesture to the gentleman. Uh, we had a very poor introduction, and in my haste to make amends, I was inappropriate and... Uh, touched him without asking and I wanted to apologize to both you and I turned to him and to you sir I have a bit of a thing for men in uniform and I'm gonna look to bear and give him a wink <laughs> yeah. 
Also, um, <clears throat> and it is very nice to meet another Goliath. I don't see many of you around. Just pleasure to see you again. More to see another of my kind. His eyes look at you, Bear, briefly, and then look, then kind of zeroes back into Sura. And uh, now that you're closer, you can see that his face is, has got several scars on it um, from different things. And you also see a very pronounced scar across his neck. Um, <clears throat> and you can see he, uh, uh, he just has very hard scrutinizing eyes. Uh, just distrustful eyes um, as mm. he as he looks you guys over and and he's as he looks Asura in the eye and he says, "It's my understanding that you tried to cast a spell." Uh, my at my hand, no, but uh, our wizard did get very excited. Uh, he was just trying to better understand the general feel of the place, the emotional state of the individuals in the room. Uh, and he oh. did so without consent and without asking. And that was inappropriate, and we do apologize. His eyes kind of scan the group for a moment and then fall uneasy. And he says, what were you trying to cast? <clears throat> I was trying to cast Detect Thoughts just to know the emotion of those in the room were not hostile. Why? <clears throat> Should we be hostile? As defenders of the realm, we come across many enemies, Sir Goliath. Um... We can never be too careful. Why don't you roll a persuasion check? <laughs> Do uh, I help him? Can I help him at all with this or no? Uh, let's see. You said, uh, sure. So I roll advantage. <laughs> I roll twice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, roll 20. Okay. My first roll is good enough. It was 18 plus two, so. Okay. Nice. That's good. He kind of continues scrutinizing you for a moment and, and says, well, me and my men are hi hired to be defenders of this realm. So no more magic casting is that understood. Much obliged, wonderbar. <laughs> And then uh, he doesn't say anything else, and the, the town leader kind of interjects. He's like, well, well, I'm sure there was no real harm meant, of course, and I'm sure we'll be able to proceed um, with uh, the discussions in peace, a uh, peaceful manner, yes. Uh, yes, now, I just wanted to, to apologize publicly for it. Well, that's, that's quite civil of you, really. Um, now... What is it, this secret matter that, that uh, you wanted to discuss? Well, you see, part of our journey here is to, um, to delve deeper into the source of this goblin problem. Um, obviously, it is strange enough that they have traveled down this way in the first place, but it seems that there might be something bigger going on, for there must be a king or somebody here who, who is orchestrating this goblin problem? Uh, well, yes. Uh, he, I have heard the rumors of, of a goblin king. Um, do, do you know anything more about that? And he turns to, to Varesh and says, I've heard of a goblin king. There's been a number of people trying to find him. But they've stayed in, they've, they've kept it well hidden. Yes, I don't I, think I you'll find him here. Well, we are hoping to kind of create a home base as we circle outward um, to better establish uh, our understanding of this land. Obviously, 
we are not as well versed uh, as you all are. But as defenders of the realm, we want to better understand its people, its areas, its needs and wants, so that we can make sure not to impede upon the daily activities of those who live here safely. You want to learn about people in order to hunt goblins? Well, yes. The best way to understand how things work is to understand how people work. It's no wonder you haven't, it's no wonder you haven't found any of them yet. You don't need to learn about a village to hunt deer. It helps to know the land you are on. To be respectful of its customs so that you, when you come across a moment of suspicion, that you do not make assumptions of the wrong thing. These are not, <clears throat> this is not how you hunt. Well, there is different ways to hunt. What's important is what happens at the end of the hunt. Uh, the town leader kind of interferes again and is like, well, well, I'm sure you're doing the best you can and we all have our own methods of, of seeking out uh, dangers to us all. Um, but I don't think I've heard of any goblins in town. They have been mostly harassing shipments along the way uh, to and from s some of the mines, especially those pertaining to uh, gold and diamonds. You know, they don't seem to, to care much for the iron shipments. I suppose they're not very much for blacksmithing, I, I suppose. Uh, but they seem to like the shiny things. So uh, perhaps you could talk to uh, some of the delivery uh, carts and, and the companies that run those mines. Yes, thank you very much for that information. I will be sure to add that to our list of uh, endeavors uh, as we gather more information. Uh, but we did notice, and you, uh, you had mentioned, and we had obviously heard from the conversations around today that, you know, there was a lot of anxiety around missing individuals. And we wanted to be kind and pay our respects, even though this is not our people. You know, we are all in Corandia together. So uh, we wanted to better understand this, the pain that was going on. Uh, and so we had a great opportunity to head to the, not the rectory, the recovery uh, and, and provide a little bit of tithing uh, for their kindness and generosity to those less fortunate. Um, and some and prayer. We say, and of course, and some prayer. Um, but I was I was a bit more curious to understand more of what uh, you are thinking in these regards to these missing individuals. Uh, perhaps there is a connection. Maybe the goblins are getting bolder. You, you really think that goblins might be sneaking into town? Well, if they have a king or someone who is running the show, perhaps they are getting more um, emboldened and becoming more shrewd about how this world works. You hear Varesh say, I highly doubt goblins are coming, are, are becoming bold enough to come into a city this large without causing, like without being seen. Maybe check. they have... Inside what? check, Varesh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. That's a 16 plus 6. Nice. Holy shit! <laughs> okay. Love it. He seems um, to you generally unimpressed. Um, you, you definitely saw some disdain when you were talking about your excuses for like learning the customs and stuff like that. Like you didn't like it didn't compute in terms of like hunting a creature like a goblin is a pretty straightforward act to him. Um, and he, uh, he doesn't seem to be dishonest, but he seems extremely suspicious of you. Okay. Uh, but of he didn't all like of you. get really defensive when we were talking about disappearances. 
No, not not really. He's just suspicious. Thinks where he is. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we are called very... we are called the folly. <laughs> yep. Nah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, if not, if not goblins, uh, obviously I know that we are perchance moving past our jurisdiction here, but um, we are just eager to help where we, and how we can. Is Do you have any understanding of what could be happening with these disappearances? Oh, well, um, un- unfortunately, people disappear periodically it's just mining is a dangerous business and there has been increasing dangers throughout the whole land uh, what is bandits and goblins and other nefarious things uh, strange creatures and the like um there's there's any number of possibilities it, it is possible some beast has come in or uh, perhaps a criminal element has been making deals and I don't know, uh, you know, have take, taking them out and that sort of thing. That would be my guess. It's usually some sort of criminal element when those things start happening. Hmm. Uh, do you happen to know the names of the c- local criminal elements in this area <laughs> that we should be out looking for? Oh, I'm afraid I, I don't dabble in those sorts of areas, my dear. Just gonna look to stoic. Insight check. We got your <laughs> <laughs> hands out on us. No one should be there before. <laughs> Shit, I don't read face. <laughs> All right, make an insight check. All right. Oh crap. All right, different dice. <laughs> That's a nineteen plus six. <laughs> Dang. Yes. Okay. The human mind. Twenty-five. Dude, it's been wasted up till now. <laughs> it really waste. has. We would have been able to cipher things so quickly. <laughs> Just a, a, a stoic. Let's see. With a twenty-five. Um, so. As he's talking and as he's saying these things, it's like everything he's saying is true. Like everything he's saying is is a fact. I mean, that's that, all, that is all stuff that's happening, things that tend to happen. Um, but it's like you get the you get the faintest sense that there's some nervousness or something that he's he's just nervous about at the moment as he's talking about this. Sir, I mean no offense, but it seems like you know more than you're letting on as you talk to our companion. What? What? Whatever could you mean? Just get the feeling that we've been here a day and heard about disappearances, and you've been hearing about them for quite some time. I would just like to believe that you would have more information than shit happens. Stoic. I'm going to turn to him. (laughs) Stoic. It is obvious that this man is very upset about the loss of his peoples. I I can understand your concerns, but he seems like a man who genuinely cares about the people that live here and only want what is best for them. You're quite right. I... I put full trust in the capabilities of Captain Varesia to suss out any sort of dangers to the city. And of course I'm aware of disappearances happening, but we shouldn't, uh, we, we have to trust those who have the skill set to do so. You are quite and, right. And Varesh, you are, your men guard the city, is that correct? He nods. Just, I want to make sure you understand. So if anybody comes in, you would know. But you don't know what happens in the countryside around the city? To some small degree. But we don't have enough men to guard everything. 
And so we can't send out too many scouts up into the countryside. We actually don't even have enough support to gather the, uh, to guard all of the shipments, which is why the attacks are still allowed to happen. But we send what we can. So you do, you would send guards out to the mining facilities, is that right? They ask, yeah, there are some posted out at the mines and some that, that are able to escort shipments as they're available. Hmm. And you've had no, uh, no goblin sightings from your men? Yes, they attacked some of the, the, the shipments. Oh, uh, okay. We fight them off when we can. But sometimes uh, they attack ones that aren't guarded. Hmm. Okay, just just get in the lay of the land, see where we need to focus our efforts, I suppose. Uh, speaking of the town, uh, do you have men posted through the entire town, or is it kind of scattered throughout? I only ask because obviously uh, someone was lost down in your um, your lower area of the city where the uh, temporary homes are set. You see him kind of narrow his eyes and he's, he just goes, I'm not at liberty to discuss the details of my guards and where they might may or may not be posted. Just be safe to assume that if you think one might be watching, they are. Absolutely. I, I meant no disrespect in my question. I just wanted to make sure that there was a a fairness in the setup. Uh, I come from a place in which it is not so fair, and so I only meant as a question. Doak is starting to pace at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just putting that out there. Uh, Hadem says, I, I can assure we are doing everything we can to protect everyone in the city. Thank you. I do appreciate your honesty and candor. Uh, and I do not mean any disrespect in my questions. I mean only to better understand. And I understand that it is not everyone's cup of tea in how we go about our business. Uh, but please be assured that as defenders of the realm, we do mean this entire realm. That includes you and your people. Uh, well, of course, yes. I, I know that you have a busy evening and we do not miss, wish to disturb it too much longer. Uh, I know you have an appointment. But we do hope that at some point we can uh, enjoy a cup of tea together. <clears throat> um, as you say that, you see um, behind you, you see like one of uh, the braids of, the, like one of the dreadlocks of uh, the rash gets slowly lifted up. And you just see him just sort of like, he just sort of goes like this and just like brushes his ear because he can feel something <laughs> in his ear and you see it drop. And uh, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> and I'm gonna lean forward and I'm gonna shake his hand and I'm going to be like, I hope the weather stays true and that there is no storms in your future. It is an old El Rockin saying. You hear just the slightest little <laughs> <laughs> and you see you see Varesh kind of like look around sharply for a second and you know not not immediately seeing anything but uh Hadem says well yes uh, I suppose so um well uh I, I do hope you enjoy your s stay and as we said before, uh, I think the countryside is probably your best bet for finding more about the goblins. And I think uh, that if there's anything we can help you do to, to find those, let us know. Thank you. The information you have shared has been incredibly insightful and we will be sure to look at the specific uh, gold and diamond 
shipments, as you said, the shinies. Very, very good. Hmm. Good night. You as well. As we're leaving, Stoic's going to turn back and just be like, and if there's anything we can do to help you with the missing people that are disappearing that your guards have no idea about, we'd be glad to... <laughs> I'm just like pushing him out the door. <laughs> so close. <laughs> I'm just like right there. We made it without an easy incident, but then we had a stoic incident. I know. I know. <laughs> if it's not place, one, it's the other. Put me in a guards not doing shit to help the people. My track record shows. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. My voting track. record shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. Okay. So you guys head off uh, back into the evening as it's kind of the, the tail end of twilight here. Um, you know, it's like the sky is still just kind of a dark blue, but it's going to get dark very quickly here. Um, oh, but I guess as soon as we exit the, uh, as soon as we're out of the earshot, Storm. Storm, you hear? I don't hear anything. All right. I guess she's on her mission. So we're just Hopefully outside you won't have of any storms the keep, evening. right? Yeah, we're at the the we're at the people's yeah, you're hall, which is in front of the keep. Of the keep. And the uh, the Dorian Temple, the abandoned Dorian Temple, is like right, almost right outside the gates of or whatever the wall. Of the keep. Mm-hmm. Do you want to visit the Dorian Temple? You know, just what the information that we've gotten, like this is a we're here to hunt or to find goblins. Some kind of yes. Okay. Some disturbing goblins. And what better way to kind of Mm. stick it to the man than to stick inhabit it. the uh, temple of a of a uh, paladin order that their job was to hunt goblins. And so you want abandoned. to go to the... You want I just want to look to and the... peek through the windows essentially sure. just to see if there's anything that might look a little askew. Since it's kind of on our way, kind of, sort of. Yeah, yeah I just want to go and. Okay. Are there any windows to peek through? Or is it kind of is it boarded up? So um, as you approach the the front of the, the temple, which is you know fairly large, it looks like it used to be fairly impressive, but has been neglected and, and weather-worn and you see that the doors, the double doors leading into it have been kind of boarded up. Um, <clears throat> and you can see even that boarding job is kind of old. Um, like it's just been abandoned for quite a while at this point. And uh, you see uh, above it, you see um, it's the symbol of children, but it's got kind of a unique uh, circle around it. Uh, that seem that has some uh, some writing around it. And kind of, a lot of it is kind of worn out, but it, you can't read the whole thing. But it seems to be a sort of oath. Um, and you get the impression that it's basically like a ring of a ring with text in it that seems to be the oath, like some sort of oath around the Order of Doria, mm-hmm. uh, with that children symbol in the middle. Um, <clears throat> and you know, as you approach, it's, it seems, you know, especially right now, it seems dark. Um, are you like walking around it? Or are you just seeing from the front? Or... Yeah, I want to walk I... around it. Yeah. Can I sneaky, sneaky? Yeah, can I sneaky, fine. sneaky my way around it? Uh, sure. Is it going to be like uh, super obvious if we're just kind of walking around, or is are there a lot of people out? Is it? Um, there are some, you know, alleyways, kind of like so. Okay. It, it's facing, um, it is, uh, there's basically some kind of trees and like a little wooded area right to the left of it, just very small kind of wooded area. To the right is an alleyway and the, 
you don't know what's behind it, but uh, there's an alleyway to the right of it, so you could walk around it. Obviously, there are not as many people walking in alleyways as in the streets, and the streets are starting to die down as it gets dark here. Um, so you're seeing, you know, like maybe half as many people as you were at this point uh, as people start packing up and getting, you know, turning in for the night and, and whatnot. Um, so you guys can roll stealth checks to try to duck in there on detecting. All right. Can I, you want to sneaky sneak? Yeah, let's be kind of inconspicuous. Okay. So just the two of you or the whole group? I'm going to, I want to tap stoic on the, on the arm and be like, I'm going to sneaky sneak. I'll see you guys. Is it back. just the two of you or a whole, like, is I'm heading, head? I'm heading for the end. I'm not even staying around and watch. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to stay at the, the boarded up door, the front door. Okay. Easy. I will be with Bear. Okay. Roll the 25. Roll the okay. 22. Look at that. Balance the more ro- stealthy than this rolls right. are in tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't roll well, but I have a plus eight, so <laughs> <laughs> it saved me. Comes in handy. I mean, 14 is still pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So you guys kind of take a brief look around and try to slip into the shadows uh, in the wood, the little like, kind of wooded area. Uh, trying to be unnoticed uh, when you think it is best to you know, see like nobody's looking. You um, make a, I want each of you to make a perception check. Perception is eight. Jesus fucking Christ. Eight. Eighteen. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not rolling well today. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. The whole Shut campaign. Up. <laughs> Shut up. I'm just like dice jail, dice jail, dice jail. Um so you guys uh make your way around uh the, the temple kind of uh trying to see uh into it and you can see that there is some windows and you can see there are places where their windows are broken. Um, and on this, it, it, we're like, you know, like windows that kind of get, when they're really old, they, they get like dirty and uh, you can't really see through them for the most part. Um, that's, that's kind of what's going on here for the few windows that are on the side. Um, and you can see even through the dirt, it used to be, you can see what used to have some sort of design or kind of stained glass type design on it. Uh, but it's so dirty, it's hard to even see what the pictures may have been at one point. Um, you know, and at one point you see a little, like one little piece of it that's knocked out and you kind of peek through, um, you know, Sarah peeks through and doesn't really see anything except uh, it looks like just kind of a small part of a cathedral that is that with like some kind of broken down pews and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, pew, pew. so you don't see anything or hear anything, so you keep moving. Uh, eventually making your way behind the, the temple and around to the other side, um, like around the back, which just seems to be solid wall with another door that's that's also boarded shut. Um, and eventually making your way to the other side where the alley is and uh, seeing um, you know more of those windows. Balan, this time you peek in uh, and you feel like you see movement in there. Like you saw something, something, some vaguely human-sized shape, kind of move in the shadows inside. Do they sound like a hush tone, sir? I think somebody's in there. I just saw movement. I peek back in again. You don't see anything. I, Where did you see the movement? It could have been a, a trick of the eye. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like there was there was something moving and pointing in the direction where I thought I saw it over there. Do we need to get in? Oh, I really want to. Maybe are we? We're back in the alleyway again, away from Bear and Easy. Yeah. I'm hesitant. I think that we could get ourselves to a whole lot of trouble, just the two of us. But I also, we 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 do know that Bear isn't the most uh, 
light-footed <laughs> individuals. Heavy foot, light mm -hmm. mind, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, if I, the window where the, because I'm looking in the window that has the hole in it, right? It has like part of the glass missing. Is uh, that, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. is there, is this a stained glass window or is it a window that could be potentially moved? Uh, like it's like up? a stained glass window. Okay, like so it's the there. Window, yeah. Is there any windows here that have the ability to like get into, like latch into that we've seen so far? Mm -hmm. Or have they no, all been not, like the big so tall far. windows? Yeah, they're the big what tall about, like, windows. What about the holes in the windows? Are any of them large enough that like I could, like Valen or I could get through it? Uh, it doesn't look like it, no. Not from here, what you see. For the doors that we went through, is the boarding up, like, just like the, the cross over the mid door, so like if you like were able to get the door, you could like tuck underneath the boards that were up? Or would you have to literally remove boards? Uh, to be able to get do you want to go access? back and look at one of them? And while she's doing that, are there any, um, anything that looks like there might be basement entry, or something that looks like there might be a, a another way in that didn't get boarded up that's or like a an up entry where you climb up and get to like a top or a entry. higher entry mm -hmm. yeah. um and sir you're checking out one of the doors yeah i'm gonna check out the back door okay so both of you make uh well so sir roll an investigation check and and val roll a perception, perception. okay well that was a lot better um investigation is 16. okay Oof, no, that one did not roll. That was a five. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yep. Um, so as you're looking at it, you see, uh, thankfully with your dark vision, Asura, uh, you see, uh, you know, like exactly like you said, it's like that kind of X, like two large planks uh, kind of nailed seemingly into the uh, into the wall and just kind of covering over this, this door. Um, and it looks like the door opens outward. Um, you know, where it, like outward to the to the uh, boards. Uh, Valen, you don't see anything that seems to be a basement entry. Yep. My dear sweet Valen, would you perhaps be able to climb up and see? If anything is up there? Uh, possibly. I, I start looking around for footholds or anything that I might be able to kind of do the, you know. Okay. Um, or wall run, you know, because actually. Uh, yeah, aren't you able to like climb up walls? I feel like monks can do that. I think I can with my unar unarmored. Mm, let me see. Because I what didn't I choose have? thief. So like when I went when I went into my rogue life, I didn't choose thief, which would have given me climbing stuff. I went assassin. I guess it doesn't. Uh, no, sense. at ninth level, I do. I get the ability to oh. move along vertical surfaces and across liquids on your turn without falling during the move. So easy. I will eventually be able to run across water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, can. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so can I do uh, that? And I have better decks than you right now, correct? In my acrobatics, I'm plus five to acrobatics. Plus seven. Ah, uh, so you can you can still climb better yeah. than me. Okay. So that's what I was looking for for any way to kind of use. Yeah, I mean, you you think you might be able to? You can give it a try. Okay. And do I see any anything I can kind of latch onto uh, as I go up the wall, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's basically kind of like stones that are not, it's not smooth. Okay. So you might be able to, it's going to be a little tough because, you know, it's also not designed for climbing, but it's, uh, it's also you, think, dark. you think it might be just enough to, you can give it a try. Can I, can I give him a me, boost? But... Can I give him a boost? Would that help at all? Would, would I be able to get him any sort of advantage? Or use my dark Probably. vision to like kind of point out better handle points? Uh, it's probably pretty just hard to do. It probably <laughs> would give like me better, better if I had to do a perception check. That probably help with perception, or whatever. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah, 
in this circumstance, it's kind of hard for me to imagine that helping very much from your perspective. Okay. But the boost, like, just like her almost like just thought putting I'd your hand out and then me jumping off of her hand wouldn't help any? Uh, I mean, it'd help you get up a few feet, but it wouldn't, you know, you've got a long way to okay. go after that. It's, you know, okay. it's probably three stories high. We tried. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> trying to try, try, try to help you not roll alone. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're doing an acrobatics check. Uh, this is for climbing and be athletics. Oh, I was trying to try to find a way to parkour this if I could. Not like obviously full on parkour, but is it going parkour. to be straight? It's going to be athletics. Like that is the thing. What about the tree side? Would the tra- tree side give us parkour? With the trees like up against the side? Uh, the tree side. You said there was a tree side and an alley yeah. side. Yeah, I'm thinking, of, I'm looking. Yeah, I thought you'd do that. Awesome. <laughs> Parkour. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a plus two, I'm, an additional two for that. So, oh, please, dice roll well. All right, that's a 23. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Found my dice for the night. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Okay. Wow. It's two straight sixteens on that dice. So, yeah. So, oh. finding kind of a a kind of bigger, uh, like older tree uh, next to this. You you uh, take a run and and just with a couple of steps, run up the trunk and grab one of the branches and, and in one one movement, pulling yourself up and basically kind of monkey swinging in some ways, uh, <laughs> making your way up uh, and eventually reaching the, the point where it, it kind of thins out, but it seems to be even with the roof. Um, you take one of the, the kind of more flexible branches here and then like basically hand over hand, very quickly run uh, with with your feet on, on another branch and then sort of like Use the bendiness of the branch and then make a jump, making a clean flip onto yes. the onto the roof. Nice. I love it. <laughs> nice. So I'm on the uh, roof. Am I like? Is it like one of those almost tiered things? Like there's a, a lower roof and like a higher roof, or is this all like I'm on the top of the? Yeah, the, it's like one. Out. It's like a slanted roof, so you're kind okay. of on the edge, like you're on okay. this, this slant and. You get the impression you have to kind of be careful because there's, uh, you know, this tile is not new. You, mm-hmm. know, you don't know how reliable each of these are going to be at each step. So you have to be careful, but you also see a couple of places where the roof has collapsed in. Um, so you have to be careful. Did, did me and Easy hear this? Uh, roll a perception check. Say, not with my footsteps. <laughs> I'm Legolas. <laughs> you were like falling from trees too. A perception? Yeah. Thirteen. Nope. I rolled a solid eleven. <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, especially with his stealth roll. So. Nope. Nope. Okay. Right, so, so you're up on top of the temple. What do I see up there? Uh, you see the, the roof with collapsed places. Um, you see the moon is starting to rise up uh, over the horizon. You see the city and you see the you know, various torches and lanterns kind of ma- you know, making their way through the city. Uh, it's kind of pretty uh, mm-hmm. you know, from this vantage point and seeing all these, these moving lights. Um, uh, but from your vantage point, you're basically looking at the, like as far as the temple itself, you're just on the roof and you see the various cracks and where a lot of the shingles have already kind of like fallen off or uh, slid off. And, and uh, you see, like I said, there are places where the roof has kind of collapsed in. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very weather-worn and ancient. Mm-hmm. So very gingerly and with intentional footsteps. I walk around and go to one of the collapsed areas and look in to see if I can see anything through there. Okay. Um, let's see. So you move very slowly. So you just take your time and, and kind of like testing and 
making sure you're not gonna slide to a three-story fall. Yep. Um, or fall into a, a, a weak yeah. spot on the roof. Uh, you kind of make like your way fall, over so. to make your way, you know, back towards the back of the temple, and, and like eventually reach a spot where a pretty sizable piece, of, you know, has has uh, fallen in. Um, <clears throat> make a perception check. Sixteen. Okay. So as you look in, and you don't have dark vision, but as you as you look in, uh, you can see um, kind of the front part of a cathedral uh, where there's again those benches and, and pews that have that some of them have been kind of fallen over or cracked from various uh, either time or from people or who knows. Um, you see a lot of dust, you see leaves um, that have been kind of blown in there um, uh, over time. You see kind of water damage on, a very, on various places. You see as uh, you're starting to see some moonlight stream in from, it's, it's muted because of the dirtiness of the window, but you're, you're seeing just kind of a very faint stream of moonlight starting to come in as the moon rises up. Um, and you see a, a stage with kind of an ancient stone um, lectern that uh, apparently was used in like sermons or, or things of that nature um, that seems to be kind of set in place. And you can see one of the corners is, is actually like been uh, like you can see it's some stone down around the corner where like the corner has been like knocked off. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just generally um, neglected and damaged. Um, and there on the, like toward the back of the stage, um, as you kind of squint, your eyes adjust and you're, you're looking in, you see what looks like a number of figures that look like sort of hunched over in the back. Uh, and you see them kind of moving and doing stuff and you hear kind of like, just, you can't tell what they're saying, but you hear whispers. So they're hunched in the back are they like is it like a they're in some kind of ritual like, circle kind of thing you're not sure what they're doing but they're, they're they are kind of in a circle like hunched around something uh, it's hard to see in the dark because they're kind of in the back and it's you know it's pretty dim you're just seeing a collection of figures kind of moving and you're whispers oof there's no place to maybe get a better vantage point. Like, I just can't see. Like, it's, it's because it's dark and I don't have dark vision. It's, it's dark, you're three stories up. It's, yeah. yeah. From from there, can I see a place where I might be able to get a better better view from down below? Does it, is there some place, can I see from there if there might be some place on the first floor where I could get a better view or is it, I can, or I, I can just say like, I have to be in the building to see what's going on. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. So from, okay, so from where I am right now, can I see a place on the first floor where I might be able to get a better vantage point to see what they're doing? Sure, right next Or is to it just it. one of those things? Okay, <laughs> you make, a per, make a perception check? No, no, I'm saying if you were right next to them, yes, you could see better well, what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I don't, <laughs> outside, like, I mean yeah, outside so the it's building. Outside? No. Yeah, okay. Not that you okay. Can that's, see. Like, that's you that's were on the first about. floor outside, so... All right, so I want to gingerly make my way back and try to, as best I can, kind of go down the way that I came up. Okay, make an acrobatics check. That one's not as good. That's a 13. Okay. And make a. <laughs> if you don't a... go, don't, 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 um, no, that's fine. Um, okay. so you, <laughs> not as gracefully. Yeah. You, you jump back out trying to get onto the same branch and just almost losing your footing. Um, almost kind of like, you know, do one of those things where it's like your feet are on the branch, but you kind of like the branch above you is really, is, is too flexible. And you kind of like fall like that for a second before you're <laughs> able to kind of work yourself back up <laughs> enough to, to continue on. Mm -hmm. And then you let go of the branch and it does this like a little bit more noise than maybe you wanted to make um, as you very, as you quickly but carefully make your way down, uh, swinging down to, to land next, softly next to Asura. 
there are people in there. Good people or bad people? I couldn't tell, but uh, they are circled around something, and a lot of people who stand around in circles, I don't think are typically doing good things. <laughs> Not in the That's dark, anyway. Sure. When, when Stoic's friends get in circles, I don't trust anything they're doing. <laughs> Maybe we should go grab uh, at least Easy and Bear. Maybe go ahead and maybe go get Stoic. And I don't know what I don't know what to do here because it's dark. We don't have a lot of information to go off of. I mean, we could try to come back tomorrow in the daylight and see if we can maybe sneak in and try to really assess the situation or we could just go in and do our normal thing and fight first and ask questions later doesn't usually work well, out I, for us too well yeah I do like to just bust my way into a situation and die almost instantly but I would at least like sexy healing hands around before I do that uh, I don't know uh, let's go back at least to talk to the boys because they're still standing out front I'd say that me and Easy were playing a game of Bloody Knuckles. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Ooh. That's a bad idea on Easy's part. It's a real <laughs> bad idea on my part. <laughs> so I'm going to We do. come back and Easy's missing a finger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Your turn. Yeah, guys, I don't mean to interrupt whatever this is. There are people in there. Oh. But there oh, are people yeah. in there. What do they look like? I, being of human you know, origin here, I don't have dark vision, or I cannot see very well in the dark. Uh, so mm. I couldn't, all I could see were basic figures in a circle around something can you uh awesome details i know can you take me to the closest point well from where i saw the people i was up on the roof they were towards the back of the building like where we are or the other side the back side towards the back okay um okay i'm gonna walk that way uh and try to get, basically get get to the window and again okay. hold on to my holy symbol and cast divine sense okay well just to warn you uh it does say uh non location of celestial fiend print one dead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover right but i think a window would maybe or is that still considered cover um it's where you can probably see them through that window. Make a perception check. You better roll high. It, it, is us pointing out where we saw? It's a 19. Nice. <laughs> any any <laughs> adder to that or just a? Well, plus one adder. Roll to 18. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So they lead you over to the alleyway uh, side of the building where they... Okay. And looked into the window that uh, Valen thought he saw something. Um, and as you look, and you kind of like have to like get like really kind of far to one side, and you and you feel like you're seeing as as you look in, you feel like you see a little bit of movement just on the edge as you kind of like try to get an angle toward the the back. Uh, so you feel like you're seeing just kind of the edge of, of some some shape doing something. And my 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 divine sense does nothing. Uh, it might give you a read on that figure, or that 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 one part that you can see there. Okay. Well, I mean, not that I didn't trust you, but to um, Alan. So I can I can teleport in there, but. <clears throat> They'll probably see me as soon as I teleport in, unless there's a way. One of y'all can make me invisible. 
It's not thick. I can cast darkness, so everything would be black. <laughs> that would kind of work. It would give me a chance to hide. Well, but then they would see the darkness. And... They would be in darkness themselves. Yeah. They would go, they oh shit, out. it is dark. You yeah. know, that might be a good way to possibly get some faces if they run screaming out of the building. <laughs> Unless or there's out. another way out. I right. don't think they're coming in and out of the building through the front doors. I mean, that's that's true. We might lose the ability to actually see where they're going. And yeah, we don't want to spook them too much. Wait, I'm sorry. Did you sense anything with your divine sense or whatever sense you have? You didn't um, do it, right? Do what? You didn't do it, right? Yeah, well, you did. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try it again um, when, I, when I see that guy. Okay. So you uh, again clutch your whole symbol and reach out just with that kind of like sliver of what you can see with that one figure. Nothing pops out at you. Nothing. Hmm. I mean, I guess you still could be necromantic. This would definitely confirm it, but I got nothing on him. Should I just knock on the door? We could, we could say, since I am a paladin, that I was just looking at an old temple. We could use that as a cover story. I don't think that would go over too well, especially here at night. Like I said, I can still teleport in there and teleport out if I have to. I don't know. Are we back towards the front again? Are we still standing in the back where the broken window is? Back by the broken window. I'm. This just may be that I've spent too much time around you guys and have become a little uh, jaded, but I'm wondering if our friend, uh, drawing a blank on his name, the town leader guy, had his name? Had them. Had them. If this is his uh, his plans for the evening. Oh, wait, no. Why would he meet in an abandoned Dorian temple? Why would the group of individuals be in a circle inside of an abandoned Dorian <laughs> temple? <laughs> but I'm I'm saying someone like Haddon would have secret offices in his keep. I would imagine. Bad. I have a question. Yes. Only you can zap yourself in and out, or can you zap someone else in and out? I think, unfortunately, only myself. He keeps yeah. rolling things, and this makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Life is like, happening don't like while you're happening. talking. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> see, I don't like this. Life needs to stand still while we talk, because we spend a lot of time talking. <laughs> Okay. It's, the time we, stops. We over we overanalyze everything we do because uh -huh. we are the folly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's um. Uh, let's let's go. Let's go get stoic. Let's talk about this at the end. Mm -hmm. Get just I get agree. out of get out of this temple right now. For if we're not going to do anything right now. I, the problem I is, I think that by the do we basically do we want to hop in guns a blazing now to figure out what is going on because you said you don't sense anything bad so it could be good these could be good people these could be paladins well, i don't we sense do anything know. necromantic they could still be bad let's just let's get to the end out of your shot of anybody ah yeah. uh. Is that Terra so or Asura hard. doing that? <laughs> Both! Because Asura's a nosy, nosy, nosy. She wants to know what's going on. <sighs> yeah. So what are you doing? It, let's go back to the front at least and into the like the town square where there might be a few more people. It looks pretty suspicious having us just stand in the alleyway back here. And I'm saying that in low, hushed tones. <laughs> yeah. And start walking back towards the front okay anybody coming with me yeah 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 okay. it's i i nod and and i agree okay. Asura. go find, sto go just find stoic just, 
Just before I go, though, can I, like, listen in to see if I can hear anything? Like, I can pick up on anything? Um, or is it too quiet? Is it, like, their whisper whispers are too quiet? Because, I mean, he could hear from the top of a third floor, third story yeah, building. He, well, he heard that there were whispers. He couldn't hear what they were saying. Um, gotcha. Make a perception job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 17, 18, 19, 21. 21. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you, they're, they're speaking very hushed, like they're very quiet. So you also can't really pick up a whole lot. Um, you do hear one of them, like, kind of, you, you do hear one of them say, no one's gonna know. And then everyone else is like, shh. Be a bunch of punk teenagers that are out doing nothing right now. <laughs> Y'all, did you walk away? Everyone left, didn't they? I, I, they walked I to the front. Yeah, they walked yeah, to I'm the still front. watching you, though. I'm making sure you're not dying. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use thaumaturgy and just go, shh, shh. And just make an echo where it just is the shh sound echoing. What the fuck are you doing? Like inside inside the room, like okay. where they were whispering. It's just, <clears throat> just going to be a quiet shh, 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 shh that echoes. You see, you hear the whispering stop. You hear a couple of other whispers. And then you hear very hurried movements and the sound of some metal. Can I peek my eyes in to see what, what metal is making sounds? Where they're going? Uh, you can't really see because they're like still, they're, you know, like they're all facing inward in the circle. Um, you can't really see like what they're doing or what's, if there's anything in the middle of the circle or not. You're just hearing a little bit of metal. Did we are they leaving anything? or are they still there? They're there at the moment. But they uh, they they said a couple things and then started make, moving really hurriedly. Were, were we from the outside able to hear any metal moving or anything like that? Was it loud or was it just something that felt localized? No, it's what? it's not loud at all. Okay. <laughs> what are you what are you I'm doing, this sir? Thing. Like, what am I watching you do? <laughs> You're just watching a sir just like. Her whole body is like aching to go inside. <laughs> I'm gonna, you like I'll, see like her whole soul is just like. I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna walk up to you. And just go. What's going on? What are you doing? That I was whispering. Someone said they weren't going to find out, and then there was a banging of metals. Okay. So I mean, you see them start to, like one by one, start to leave the group and go out of sight. Come on. Just disappear? Or are they going somewhere just else? Just going out of sight from you. Can they see me? Has anyone looked over in my direction? You don't know. Uh, fuck me sideways. <laughs> Sarah's going to get us everyone killed because she's so curious. <laughs> Sarah, now is not the time. We need to get our full band back together, okay? You see the last you see the last one scooping up something and then darting off. And I can't see where they've darted off to. No, they just started off to the right out of vision. And no one's coming out anywhere around the front or anything like that. Nope. Did, did I say just a service? And the, uh, the room inside falls silent. You're no, because she's like looking through like a small okay. like hole it's in the window. Story. So yeah, like you're kind of there, like talking to her, but like yeah. Asura, <sighs> come on, let's go. <laughs> You're going to get us killed. If anyone's going to get killed, it's going to be me. That's even worse. Come on. 
I'm just gonna walk with Bear. <laughs> what, uh, what took you guys so long? I, did you see something else? Did you hear like what? What was? Let's go back to the place, and they will tell you. I will pout my way back. <laughs> Going back to the inn. Okay. Yeah, because that's where Stoic went, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we assumed you went there anyway. How long did that all take? Uh, well, they, as you guys make your way back, uh, I mean, this is this is probably taking. Let's see what the cleave trip on. I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, something like that. Because I would have shot straight back to the hotel, the inn, got in my room, and immediately started casting clairvoyance. Okay. I'd stumble upon the plot. Hopefully. <laughs> took 10 minutes. <clears throat> that was the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was the plan. Listen. One of us followed it. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the best laid plans <laughs> of Goliaths and Tieflings, <laughs> of, of follies and idiots. <laughs> Why'd you why'd you have the system? <laughs> I mean that's that's because, the most a sure thing. Because I'm an asshole and I'm curious. <laughs> well then why did you shush them? I wanted to see how they react. Yeah. It was mostly I was trying to see if they would if they were just kids freaking out and that they would like show us where the exit is. Mm. So we could figure out how to get in. But mm -hmm. I lost sight of them. So now I'm like Obviously, there's something in there that you can get in and out through. And they went to the right, which was, we were on the alley side when we when I went back down to look to, for, for you to cast yeah. the thingamabob, or were we on the tree side? I think, I think you took me to the alley side. I think. Doug, were we on the alley side when we went back down so that he could do his let me think about things? You're on the alley side. Okay, and so then, and they went to the right, which was towards the tree side. No, toward the alley side. So they came towards me. Not toward you. You were like so if you imagine like uh if you imagine the building and this is the alley side here, right? Uh, and this is mm -hmm. the front door. Like you were like here and you were like able to see just the kind of edge of just barely see the stage area and when they left they they walked to the right like kind of up this one towards the alley just, side back door side as far as you know yeah okay it's a okay warlock i would have toasted those kids with a fireball <laughs> <laughs> all right just eldridge blast them to death it's like bam Light them up. Yep. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a bunch of Independence Day quotes in my head. <laughs> Take the tires and light the fires. Welcome to Earth. Wait. <laughs> Let's see. So, so this is what you're using your uh, your your. Uh, using your crystal ball to to see, see. I, yeah. Uh, I thought it could range on a person. I'm a little nervous because the spell reads location. So I thought we'd try this before. Whether that person's in that location. Okay. That's why I was trying to speed up because I wanted to get immediately from the meeting to a place mm -hmm. where I can cast a spell to view the room we were in. Yeah. Is the intent. Yeah. So say so by the time you you uh let's see, you make it back to the inn and back to your room and then have been ten minutes more to cast the spell. Are you choosing seeing or hearing? Uh 
I can the ten the spell's ten minutes long, and I can switch it. I would want to see first, so I could see if, who's in that room before switching to hearing. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay. So. So you cast this in. Let's see. So you take time and, and uh, put your hand over your holy symbol and start weaving uh, the ritual and uh, praying and, and asking for guidance in this you know this very per particular ritual spell uh, ritual prayer used to to cast this um, and you suddenly feel your vision sort of like almost it's almost like a weird sensation almost like your eyes leaving your body oh, it's it's creepy. very weird uh, <laughs> but it's like you closed your eyes and winced for a second and then you opened them again and you see um kind of from a like an almost an aerial view you see the room of the people's hall um uh, where you where you were so inside you still see uh Pretty much the same people that you saw when you left. Uh, you see Hadem and Varesh um, talking to each other, and then you see and you see Hadem is kind of gathered his stuff in his arms, like he's about to leave. And then you see the other guards are just kind of. The, the just... moment I see him talking, I would have switched to hearing if I could. Okay. Because uh... it's it's an action, so what six seconds. Right. Okay. And so, so you suddenly go blind, and there's this this other sensation of like your ears almost you know, like suddenly leaving your head, and it, again weird sensation. Um, but now here in the pitch black, uh, you hear uh, you hear the voice of uh, of Varesh. Uh, saying, I understand, but I don't like them. Strange folk traveling from the city and from who knows where, coming here and looking into goblins? It doesn't seem likely. And uh, Hadem says, Well, it, you know, if you say so, but it, of course probably wise to keep a good eye on them. Uh, you know, it's always a good, good idea to keep eyes on strangers uh, that are acting strangely, I suppose. And uh, Gresh says, I will. And if they do anything shady in this town, you know I'll take care of business. And Hadem says, yes, of course, of course you will. Um, I don't doubt it for a second. Um, well, um, I, I suppose I am going to uh, get going then for the evening. Um, I've got to meet someone to check out the, you know, the health of the North Wall. So um, I, I will, uh, you know, I, I, I'll see you uh, tomorrow then. And. You hear uh, Hadan or uh, Varesh uh, say, "Tomorrow," and then you just hear kind of the sound of of uh, shuffling about. You hear a you hear a door open and close, um, and you you hear uh, a slight bit of movement into what sounds like a stumble, and you hear uh, Varesh go, "What?" And you hear like. The, you hear the um, the sound of what sounds like a dagger being drawn, and quickly quickly drawn, and then the sound of his axe being brought out. I'll switch back to vision. I want to see what Storm's doing to him. <laughs> As you do, you see um, suddenly an empty room. You see the guards suddenly like looking around, like with weapons drawn, as you see Varesh has, has kind of gotten into this crouched stance 
as he's just now putting back a dagger um, that he had drawn really quickly and drew his axe. Um, and it takes you a second as they're all sort of looking around like if something happened, it takes you a second to notice that his the strings on his boots seem to have been tied together and he slashed them very quickly. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm really starting to like Storm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I will listen and and switch back and forth between vision and hearing for the whole ten minutes, because um, as well. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they after after they they search the room and and look around and and very thoroughly search the room. They eventually uh, start filing out as your spell fades. <sighs> Okay, so what does it take before we get back? Yeah, it'd be a little bit longer because you guys did that, uh, did your mm-hmm. thing with the, the temple while he's doing all that. Uh, so about 20, 30 minutes later, um, if you guys are heading back to the end, I, I would have I would have went down and I would have paid for our three rooms for another night before okay. we went back just to cover it. Okay. So you guys uh, make your way back to the inn? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you make your way, are you go, Are you meeting downstairs? Are you going up to your rooms? What are you doing? Um, uh, I'm going to try to get stoic. Yeah. You, you yeah, guys either would have so walked in, found me paying, or you guys would have came upstairs and found me in my room. One of the two. Yeah. Your choice. Oh. I guess if, if he's up not rooms, downstairs, so. I guess we go to the room then. Yeah. Well, what took you so long? There uh, were we found friends in the Dorian Temple. Mm-hmm. The abandoned Dorian Temple. Sense mm-hmm. right. Sarcasm. With them. I don't think we have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna explain what what Valen and I saw. Mm-hmm. What Valen did. Let Valen speak to what he saw, and then. Yep the kind of I'm just recant the whole event. Every detail that we can remember. Recount. And, yep. And I'm gonna throw in that me and Easy had a very good game of bloody fists. <laughs> right. And I and I, and that I won. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You won. laughs> Definitely sounds like something we need to investigate. Yeah. I did I did go ahead and take a little peek in on our friends. And <clears throat> I explained everything that I heard basically explaining that they definitely don't trust us. Um, I think they're looking for any excuse to prosecute us or be rid of us. Um, The only useful information I gained was that Hedem is heading to meet a friend at the North Wall tomorrow. Tonight. Tonight. Oh, was it tonight? Mm-hmm. That's why he was like, he said he, that's where he said he, he's like, I have a meeting. So we could go back to the temple or we could head to the North Wall. Can you not Is... use your, uh, your magic to look at the North Wall? I, um, I can only look at places I've been. Uh, I was hoping I'd be able to look at a, at a person, but uh... I, I can't. I can only revisit locations I've been. Mm. so I, I can't look in on them but that doesn't mean we couldn't go check out the north wall and see what we find or we can go back to that church although we could do that in the morning and see give it a good once over and in the daylight see if we can find any sounds like they might have used an entrance of some sort a hidden entrance what it does sound like I am <clears throat> intrigued by this north wall visit mm-hmm. dude but is this for all of us because this is a bit of infiltration and mm-hmm. we have to be aware of the fact that um, the guards are on high alert for our existence I 
some of you are much better at sneaking around than uh, than the rest of us but <laughs> we could try our uh our little magic light arrow trick that seemed to work pretty well last time <laughs> except for one of us completely abandoning the party and running off <laughs> <laughs> What are you? What are you referring to? What? When did we do this? Listen, <laughs> you have all gotten it into my head that we have to save the children. It's about the children. Save the children. The children of Midreach. The creepy child who told me to go down an alleyway so I could get beat up by local thug parading around as local cops and then there was a baby in the woods and then it turns out to be evil. Listen. That was not a baby. It cried yeah. like one. <laughs> so does Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I tuck him in every night? <laughs> and I sing him a lullaby. It's some Al rocking lullabies what are you, that involve what are you death. And... We're all friends here, Bear. It's a safe space. <laughs> Don't tell the orb what you do. Gosh. <laughs> What I am saying is that we need to be both seen and not seen. So that the guards are distracted by those who they see and not who those they don't. Perhaps we can go for a walk in the in the evening light. And look at the perimeter. Uh DM is the would we have a good, pretty good idea where the north wall is? Is it like on the map that you sent us? Is that is it directionally correct, or is like the north wall off to the side? I wasn't sure if no, it was it's like directionally correct. Okay. As you say that, you hear, uh, "Man, those guys don't like you very much." <laughs> <laughs> no, they do not. Not a surprise. The she is kind of flooding in your midst. Too. Storm, I have a question for you. Can you make other people invisible like you? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> I can only do it so much, though. Yes. How long could you make somebody invisible? Well, I think I've kind of done everything I can today. I've kind of turned invisible a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll tuck it out. I think I need to, to sleep before I can do more. Gotcha. Is there anything else that you can still do today? Mm, I can fly and I can <laughs> talk. My shoelaces and I like can a eat. Boss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how'd you know that? I may have peaked a little bit. I was very impressed with your handiwork. <laughs> he didn't like it. <laughs> I know, and then he, he needed, he needed to smile. Now he doesn't have shoelaces. He can die because he got them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he needs to learn how to smile more. <laughs> yeah, that he does. Yes, and maybe use his voice to talk instead of that weird whispering thing he does. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say we need to be nice to him about that. Oh, is he a good person? I have no idea, but it obviously looks like that was not something he chose. Okay. We're I don't know what that means, ni- but we're going. Okay, we're going to be nice about scars. Hmm? I didn't say anything about his scars. I'm saying that his voice might have something to do with the scar around his throat. Do you have a scar and you don't t- you don't talk like that? No, because it's not around my throat. I don't know what you're saying, but I don't care anymore. That's valid and fine. <laughs> Storm. I'm going to I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a fucking fairy a moral compass. <laughs> <laughs> Says the woman who kills people, but (laughs) we're not going to be assholes about people's voices. We have our boundaries. Yeah, there is a line that I am not willing to cross. Mm -hmm. And making fun of a man's voice because it's obviously based on the fact that he'd probably get a throat slit once. 
Not one of them. But changing the man's voice by removal of his testicles? <laughs> I love a good castrati. Have you heard the A's that they can sing? They are gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we we need we want do we want to go to the north wall? Do we want to figure out what? You denied me one pleasure. I refuse to be not denied two. <laughs> I'm I'm down to go. We've we've been here a whole day and no one's tried to kill us. Here. So we can go weird. for a we can go for a night walk. If yeah, the guards ask us what we are doing, we are just simply observing the perimeters yes especially since that there's somebody who was missing mm -hmm. trying to see if we notice any sort of trails or pathways that goblins might be getting closer to town mm -hmm. we are doing our due diligence absolutely yep all right and then That's... one or two of us might just walk away mm -hmm. to the shadows very mm -hmm. quietly mm -hmm. head to the north walls Let's let us go. Okay, I think we're running into John Snow there. <laughs> <laughs> we already have John Snow, uh, right? <laughs> the sexy half orc. <laughs> All right, he grew a beard to cover the scars on his face like a gentleman. <laughs> well, I've been trying to grow my beard for years, and it has not come in yet. Um. So you guys start making you guys uh, make your way downstairs and head out into the into the night. And as you do, it becomes instantly apparent that um, storm has, as you know, even in daylight, glows like it's Shit. basically <laughs> almost made of light in her natural. I form. thought she was going to bed. She didn't say that, but she is with you, and she's glowing. <laughs> Storm, my love. Um, I know that you said you were feeling a bit tired after a long journey, a long day. And you said that you don't need oxygen, yes? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Get to this bag. <laughs> mm, I don't really like bags. There's lots of fun things in it. Like what? Uh, Evans, there is rocks. It, there's rocks and metals and gooey things and a jar of eyeballs, but don't open it. Look, look listen, hmm. Asura, I'm not gonna be sneaking around with you guys. She can, she can stay with me. Will she? Will she stay? <laughs> I don't know. Storm kind of does her own thing. Don't. I just need her not. I just need her to not glow publicly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get that, but I'm I'm not trying to hide because I can't. <laughs> Nor can I. <laughs> Fine, then I'm gonna take out one of my like little torches, like the little hanging lantern mm -hmm. torches that we have, and I'm going to say, "My dear sweet one, can you get inside of here so at least we can keep you protected in case you want to take a nap." <laughs> <laughs> our big, our big, our big, big bear is going to carry it for you. You want me to get inside a jar? <laughs> yes, so that you can take a nap. Well, I took a nap earlier. I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to still get in here. <laughs> You're a brightly glowing thing, and you stand out in the darkness. Uh, roll a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, all right, all right. Persuasion, you said that's a 16. That was a 14 plus two. <laughs> okay, but you're not gonna lock it, are you? Absolutely no. not. No. Okay. And I specifically like show her that the latch is not latch, but I do close it so that it's not just like swinging freely. It'll stay ajar. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, so like the, it better the not be for not long. Closed. I don't like being closed places like this for long. Shh. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna hand it to Bear and be like, I, I wash know. my hands of everything that happens after this. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she gets in, and now you have a uh, pixie sitting in a lantern. 
get off a very soft, not really effective glow for lighting anything, but it's a soft glow. It works for what it is. Perhaps we make our way up through the the um, farmers market, up towards the that area, and then kind of we'll figure out our way from there. Sure. There's a and there's an an interest to the city in the north side by the farmer's market. That's why maybe start there and work our way around. I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you make your way to the farmer's market that is shut down at this point uh, for the most part. It is um, quite a difference from when you walked by earlier you were shopping and everything where it was booming and lots of loud noises and people and energy. Um, it's, it's now just closed down um, shacks. A lot of the things that were there have, have been like packed up and, and moved. So there's like more empty spaces in the, in the market area. Um, you see a couple of people walking here and there uh, just with lanterns or, or not just making their way from one place to another. Um, but it's a, uh, you know, quickly become kind of a ghost town in some senses. Uh, I take a look around and make sure that there's no guards or anybody like following us or hey, would actually like watching us. With that. Make a perception check. Who do you, Larry? Do you have better perception? I probably do not. He I'm plus four. Well, he especially won't right now because it's nighttime. Yeah. Then Ooh. I will do it. So is that advantage if he's helping me? Yeah. <laughs> that is lovely. Uh, that is a 21. Okay. Um, as you're walking around, you definitely see uh, steel snakes and, and the occasional Valgar uh, guard kind of walking around. Um, and they, they definitely pay attention to you as you're passing, uh, but you don't see, you don't notice anybody directly following you. Okay. And just like nod politely at them. Be very like <laughs> Milady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to describe that. It just you know, you know. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> soldier. <Okay. Ms>. Miss soldier. <laughs> soldier. Soldier. Doctor. Oh, Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> So uh, you make your way up uh, through the through the market to the area where you can see, um, you know, there's the wall. You, you can see kind of remains of where the like, carts and, and booths had been kind of set up, up against the wall uh, as well. And you can see off to the right, you see a gate, like a uh, like a uh, kind of a portcullis type situation where it's there's a just iron like very thick iron bars that allow water through, but still kind of protect, uh, you know, don't allow just people to just, or, or creatures to, to go through that area. Um, and so you're looking around uh, at this kind of immediate vicinity, you don't see anything. Uh, I am going to touch uh, Stoic's uh, arm and I'm just gonna go and then I'm gonna look to Valen and I'm gonna be like, and then I'm gonna look at Easy, if Easy, because I know sometimes Easy stealths with us. Are you going or no? Mm. We're gonna check out the north walls that you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're gonna be That's scouting the idea. all up and down the north wall. Yee! Uh... We'll probably have to do some climbing too, per chance, possibly. Per chance? Um, I don't know. Sure, I'll go along with you guys. Okay. Got the stealth. Split yes. in the party. Yep. <laughs> Listen. Don't say that. <laughs> Listen. Sometimes we're not all best suited for every activity. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so you guys start making your way uh, to the left, I assume, like in the into the city. Mm -hmm. Back toward like the keep and yeah. all of that area. Okay. So you start. Uh, Making your way along the the uh, the the walls, I'd like each of you to make a perception check. Okay. 
perception. Fifteen. Eighteen. Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Not cool, focused cool. at all. Yeah. Um, so you make your way, uh, kind of walking along the walls, uh, and you can kind of tell it's this is not like a super populated part. You know, it's like except for people who might live near it. There's, it's obviously not a crossroads. You know, I'm also stealthing like AF. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so roll, uh, roll stealth checks. Full on, full All on right, stealth. Here we go. Nineteen. Twenty-one. <laughs> Perhaps uh, we should six. have left <laughs> six. Perhaps we should have left the wizard behind. <laughs> it's a, it's a group, group stealth We're check. Tangled, right? group tangling group up on my legs here, guys. <laughs> Those sexy gams. <laughs> yeah, gams just can't can't seem to. So okay. the gams of steel are this is about the, as quiet as steel this, plotting against this. The, is, yeah. this, is da- this is damn wraith armor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So as you guys are quietly and, and trying to look around and watch for any sort of movement or any sort of suspicious activity uh, as you're making your way along the, the way, you eventually reach a point where it looks like a building has, set of buildings have been kind of built up against the wall. And so you have to kind of turn into the city, uh, you know, like to, to kind of make your way around it uh, and start making your way through alleyways and streets that way. Uh, you want to keep going? I think Bear yeah, and I are I... heading the same direction, but like 100 or 200 feet behind them to not. You guys are going against the North Wall too, just away from us? Yeah, and we're not being stealthy. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach Bear how to hunt. Perfect. I'm guessing there's like some kind of grass or whatever. Yes. Uh, let's see back here. Not really. Uh, there's it's mainly just stone, like the stone street and some dirt paths and like alleyways and that sort of thing. You're kind of in the city. That's okay. I'm still gonna pick up two sticks and just hit them together as we're walking. He's like this. Snipe! And I'm gonna teach him how to call snipes. Oh gosh. Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> I'm doing exactly what you're doing. I'm like right behind you. Him. That's how you snipe, snipe hunt. Snipe! Yes. Snipe. You gotta hit them together. Snipe. Yeah, snipey, snipey. Snipey, snipey. Snipey. Am I doing it right? Oh shit, he's rolling dice. Yep. <laughs> oh um, um, no. You pass a, a steel snake kind of patrolling and he definitely looks, gives you a very weird look and very lingering look as he passes and it's kind of like looking over his shoulder at you guys, but he doesn't say anything. I'm sure he was not hunting when he was a kid too. <laughs> just just learn how to snipe pot. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So Valen and Asura, you guys, uh, you know, make your way, trying to find your way through kind of like a surprisingly windy area, like to finally make your way you know, to try to find a way back north toward the wall. Um, just sort of making your way through like kind of narrower streets and, and uh, sideways, as you can see, uh, you know, various places where it kind of opens as some of these crossover and and that sort of thing. You're you know, you're getting the impression you're kind of in the, the heart of like where they've kind of crammed in buildings for people to live and, um, you know, space is not luxurious within the walls. So they, uh, you know, as the city has grown, they've kind of piled in here, um, you know, still kind of darted, you know, still kind of dotted in with uh, occasional elements of like the, the ruins that this, that the town is built among. Um <clears throat> And you see people occasionally uh, coming through here, people kind of making their way home or, or you know, making their way past you or just kind of sitting out in front of their doors, um, smoking or drinking or whatever the case is, talking with neighbors uh, quietly as, as things you know, go on. Um, 
and uh, you reach one of those uh, openings, like where, where there's like a crossroad of sorts, uh, and you see, uh, you know, one of the seeming villagers uh, that just sort of plainly dressed uh, kind of steps out into the street and looks straight at you guys. And then you see another one over from another street step out, looking straight at you guys. Oh, no. And then some more behind you on either side, looking, just staring at you guys. Oh. And one of them, and one of them says, you've been looking for things you shouldn't find. <laughs> and you, as, as he says that, you see kind of from one of the, like a, like what looks like a basket or a, a, some crates, like beside you see a hand come up, come up over it. And you see pulling up over it these softly glowing eyes and this <laughs> and you start to see creatures that you recognize as ghouls that you, like you fought before in the in the temple of uh, uh, Ixie way back mm-hmm. in the day mm-hmm. creeping out around as more figures step out surrounding you in this area and that's where we're going to end tonight <laughs> Sweet oh. mistakes were made. <sighs> how how far ahead of us are they? Uh, you said about a hundred feet. <clears throat> it's around. It's you got a hustle with uh-huh. full on every bit of your movement. Yeah, yeah, movement dash. Ooh, action, yeah. How many people did we see? How many creatures did we see before? Uh, you saw. Oh, shoot, my thing. So we have a week to plan for this. <laughs> Sorry, my thing suspended, so it's going to take 15 seconds for me to reload it. <laughs> That's totally okay. That gives me 15 Fine. seconds to really Absorb panic it. a lot. <laughs> a whole lot. Yeah. Uh... All my spells were built around like having conversations with people. <laughs> So, going well, into perhaps battle. we can have conversations with these people this mm-hmm. evening. Pour some tea for the ghoul. Yeah, we're all friends here. We could be friends, you know. We're not. We didn't say we're here to fight you. We're just. We want to to speak and to talk, and we really want to listen. Like we are here to listen to you, to hear you. To mm-hmm. hear. Mm-hmm. So I don't think you've been heard. It's actually really good that you didn't encounter this portion earlier because uh, it's it, apparently my map got deleted. So, oh, uh, that would have been. Well, then I'm glad we dipped awkward. around for as long as we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. the procrastination. Yeah. Uh, it works, folks. Procrastination works. Yeah, we're gonna say you saw you saw at least ten. At least a lot. ten people or That's ten things. things. At and least. Things. So you'll have a more precise count next week. Mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yeah, the, delaying uh, the TPK for a week. I like that. One more week uh, where we have hope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad I've been working on building this backup character. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sura's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Ooh. see. We'll see. All right, so uh, good session, good good job. Uh, yes. Starting to to learn some more, and obviously, apparently, getting on. Uh, I mean, you're you're poking somewhere that they don't mm-hmm. want you to poke. So uh, th- this is progress, guys. This is progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Next, we go. Look, we made a mistake. Listen. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave. <laughs> you guys do what you want to do. We're we're out. I see nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, yep. Again, join us on Discord. Check out the yep. cool merchandise we've got going on mm-hmm. now. Um, and we will be back next week to see how this, uh, what happens here. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in a week. Bye. Bye. I'm like still in shock. <laughs> I'm very much still in shock. <laughs> <laughs>